We have a guest in the house tonight who's joined us once before for a round. No, 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 no. Was it more than once? I've never been on this podcast. No, you were on one of our roundtables. You were in early COVID. Very early COVID roundtable. Two years ago, bro. Yeah. Are you 100% positive? 100% positive. Yeah. Wow. I don't remember that. I, yeah, oh, I no, you know what it was. For, he was well. He was right. also on. He was also on the demo, the Patreon listening. The demo Patreon. Yeah, that's early. what it was. That's what you it mean was. I jo- okay. I joined as a guest once. That's or, what it was. Not yeah. as a guest. I joined as a viewer yes, once when you guys held like a a the thing. Demo I was hour, never I a guest yeah. or anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just met oh, some I confuse that. Well, well then we have first time guest. Look at that. Wow. And I don't know why it's taking so long, but. Oh, Maybe the steel tip dove in the house. Hello, he's here. The legend, the man behind so many of your I'm favorite trying. songs. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. Work. I'm very excited that you're going to join yeah. us for this because it's good to get a different perspective than mine and Zilla's. In a lot of ways, mm-hmm. ours lines up. Right. Can so, I ask when did? Uh, how long has the listening audience been dubbed cultists or culties? Uh, Culties, uh, relatively new. It's okay, relatively that's new. fantastic. And <laughs> yeah. once a podcast crosses that threshold into their fans needing a name, we're it's making. That's moving. a good point. Yeah, it's I, really I, I like point. it because it's like I think we could put it on a T-shirt and it would work. They culty. Well, you could put a lot of things on a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we could. Yeah, there's a lot going yeah. on. <laughs> we could have um, done it. I was excited that they had a nickname. I'm and I'm not being facetious. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good one. I think I think yeah. it really works. So so we we've, we've reached out to our listeners our Twitter followers, and we ask them to submit questions. You know, the typical mailbag deal. Mailbag. So we're going to come right out the gate with two Wu-Tang related questions. Let's do it. And they're quick ones. So they're pretty rapid fire answers. So we're going to come out back to back. I'm just going to give them to you both. The first one's from good friend of the pod, good friend of all of ours, Mr. Jason Griff. Okay. He wants to know the over under on vaccinated members of Wu-Tang Clan. He gives a, an over under of one point five. I don't. I may not understand betting enough. Let's say what's the general uh, exact number of Wu Tang members? Nine. Nine. Like the official you want members to count Cap and Don, It's ten. Yeah, you want to count. Yeah. Cap. Let's, Let's just count Cap. Ten to make math easy. All right. Yeah. All right. So then, what does that mean for? There's ten members. What does so one point five over under. There's. So it's basically like, if it's under two, it's going to be. Basically, like if there's only one member. You take the under. If you think it's more than one member, you're going to take the over. Um, well, I know what percentage I think it is. Okay. What do you got? 50%. Okay. Good for you. Why? Out of curiosity. There's 10 of them. There's 10 of them. That makes yeah. it easy. I think 50% of them are vaccinated. You <laughs> okay. know, uh, what's the what's the Amer- what's the United States rate? Like 50 60 no, something? Higher nah, than, yeah, it's like 60 something. Yeah. Deep yeah, yeah. And the New York rate is like 89%. Yeah, same thing in Philly. Philly's like 80s, 90s. grown men with kids. I And I, you know, in the past, they've had both lyrics and mentions of conspiracy-ish things. Yeah. But I think 50% of them are vaccinated. If I had to guess, that would be my guess. Okay. What would you say, Z? I said three. I think okay. it's 30%. Method 30%. Man. No, yeah, 30%. Method Man, Master Killer, and RZA. That's it. Mm. Okay, but oh, so I, I thought about it. I, you know what? I think Raekwon because Raekwon goes to Canada a lot, and they won't let him in Canada if he's unback. So I'll say four. Okay, that four. actually okay. is something I didn't consider. If they're doing any shows, uh, at least like a year and a half, two years ago, they would have. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll do four. So yeah, I'm gonna go over as well. I guess based on Zilla's logic, I'm going Meth, Ray, and and. And Dub, if you want to tell us who you think your your picks are, please feel free. Um, I don't. I. The, the, how about I'm gonna go with the ones I don't think are vaccinated? Jizz is, Jizz is Jizz definitely not fucking vaccinated. You God is not vaccinated. Ghostface is not vaccinated. I don't Ghost know. I don't know about Ghost. I'm nah. on the fence about Ghost. Nope. 
Go you figure. know, he does have two brothers with muscular dystrophy. But yeah. he's also like highly sketched out by any governmental anything. Yeah, I think okay. Mr. Cole he's not trusting you, of science and means. governments and Merck and I mean, Pfizer and Moderna. But I, I think he would. I think he would take his his brothers into account. His brother's safety into account. Uh, are they alive? Oh, I don't know. I thought. I don't know if they if they're alive potentially yes if okay. they have passed on which would break my heart no that's a hard no I, I mean I would agree t- in most worlds I would say that that ghost is a no I think Cap is definitely a yes because he's driving a cab no he's not he's driving around a cab he, he's, he's 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 around people because he's he does like a clothing line that he's recording wasn't a lot. he a cab driver that was like twenty years ago in Baltimore no, yeah dude it's twenty years ago there wasn't. He was on yeah. the internet like years ago. Years ago. Popping. Well, no, like yeah. and like that. No, I'm sorry. Around around when like fish scale drops. So that's that's 15 years ago. What? You guys yeah. know way too much. You uh, you're casting a lot of uh, assumptions on these members of. Uh... I mean, I follow, that's what we I do follow here. Kappa on know, Instagram, I bro. <laughs> I know I know but, what he's doing. I'm all about Kappa. I'm, uh, we all know yeah, that I'm cor- not, I'm not, uh, I'm... causation does not equal correlation, but <laughs> we are we are trying to take the the data and the clues that are out there. I am Fair taking enough. it seriously. My my best guess would be fifty percent. I think I'm going a little right. higher than both of you. Yeah, I, I would say we're we're in the forty to fifty percent. Forty to fifty. If it was we were yes. putting money up, that would be my. I would be. I would. Be, that's my guess. Okay. I want to go first, and I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the best thing would be if we could actually survey the members of Woo. Hit them up. Mm. We got a hundred. You know, we talked about how many yeah. listeners we got. <laughs> we oh yeah. Ask uh, all right. So the the next Wu Tang question is. Best Wu Tang book out of Raw by You God, Staircase to Stairway by Ray Kwan. Staircase to Stage. Oh, he wrote Staircase there to Stairway. Is. Boom. Okay. Or Tao of Wu by the Rizzer. Uh, I have the, I have the Wu book. For people not... not watching the podcast, Zilla Raka had the book on deck. That was fire. <laughs> oh, and, and this have, is from the, the homie Max Nopo. Shouts to Max. Uh, I have the I have the Rizza book, but it's it's not as accessible as the Ray book. Okay, so I, I haven't read the You Got book. Okay. Um, I, I know controversial parts of it, but I haven't read it. The Rizza book is essentially the Wu Tang Hulu show. Anyone. Go for it. It's essentially the Wu Tang Hulu show. So there is like direct dialogue mm-hmm. from that book on the show, there's direct stories in the show. It is definitely the Rizza mythology and just his point of view of everything. And then like his gems and him talking about different cultures and things he's into. So it's more of like a, Riz's book is almost like a like a, a syllabus of Wu Tang yeah. that you get, you know, your first day of college. Came out a long time ago, right? That's the only one I read. Yeah, that, yeah, came, that came out, out probably out 10 years ago, I guess. Super long uh, I think even long, I think even longer than 10 years Maybe. ago. Maybe. Okay, sure. Yeah. And then I bought the Ray Kwan book. I highly recommend it because he just spends 40, 40 pages shitting on Riza. <laughs> And just being like, this guy's a fucking cult leader who's very convincing and most of us don't like him, but I think he's full of shit. And here's why. But he also spends a lot of the book talking about like his drug life and background and family and his mom and how he wrote Cream, which was like, it's like a fucking movie. He wrote Cream like the day before the studio in a, in a stash house with no electricity on a pizza box by candlelight. Wow. He wrote cream like that way. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's shit like that. We're like, this is that's, that's legit. No one would just make that up like every detail. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend the Raekwon book. I, I do want to read the you God book, but he also just shits on Riz, I think for most of the book too. So. Okay. That's, so now we're, it's basically coming down to who shits on Riz better. Correct. I think you got probably be- shits on him quite well. Cause he's very verbose, but yeah. Raekwon is just like, as we always say, Raekwon was he was right to rebel and shit on them, but then his ideas are just as terrible. So it's a little rough mm. patch. But yeah, I would yeah. strongly recommend it. I've only read the Tao of Wu, so I guess seeing as that wasn't a particularly good book, I'm gonna go with uh, Raekwon's book because he's been more entertaining. What, what do you got for us, stuff? Same as you, man. That's and yeah. I don't remember it. Uh, and it was, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Again, it's, um, it's, I feel it's, bad. It's like I, a, I haven't really kept up with the Wu Tang. They they they're very very special to me, but I I haven't really kept up with them. It's okay. probably for the best, to be mm-hmm. honest. Yes, you know, you know, I agree. There, there's a certain point in time where you could be like, you know, let's just pretend that they, you know, 
got sucked into a black hole to another multiverse. To me, they're just one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time. I feel yeah. like if I dug in, I'd be like, they are no longer one of the greatest. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I don't need to dig in and find that out. No. <laughs> I think you're there with it. All right. So the, the next question, we got two questions from C4X. And the first one is, what's the coolest, weirdest instrument that either you know how to play or you would like to learn how to play? Uh, I could play the clarinet. Huh. That's a fact. Cool. I can't. Duff? I can't play any instruments. Um, <laughs> what, what would you want to play? I do want to get piano going, but that's not okay. weird. True. Um, yo, violin is kind of. It's not that it's weird. It would be weird if I told you guys, "Hey, I've been playing violin for a few." If I told you I've been playing piano for a few months, you'd be like, "That makes sense." Yeah. I was like, "I've been playing violin." You'd be like, "That's weird." That would violin be. would be dope. Yeah, would be the weirdest one. Um, my, oh, my, my my weird instrument would be the theremin. I would want to play that's the theremin. Weird. That's a good cool. weird one. Yeah. What about that's that guitar crazy. that sits down like a piano? That shit is weird and fucking cool. The, the oh, slide yeah. joint, the slide, slide guitar, the the, the one that the blind guitar? dude from uh, Roadhouse yeah. had. Uh, a lot of people played it, but you play with a pick, and it's a fucking <laughs> yes. looks like a yeah, it's fucking sick. yeah. A lot of blue shit. What about you, Alaska? Um, I would want to do like I don't I can't play any instruments. Would um, you go woodwind? You go no, I would want to do like the one man band thing where you got like symbols between your knees. Oh, like yeah. fucking drum on your Van Dyke back. and Mary Poppins. Harmonica, you know, hooked up on like the whole. Yeah, I, have yeah. a, I have a friend who did that. It's very masturbatory. You're like, look at me. I can play everything myself. And you're just like <laughs> exactly. jamming out with yourself. Like, like your, your, your inner once. kneecaps are like playing the symbols and shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then every step you take is like a fucking snare. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, I harmonic. would actually love to play the drums, but that's not a weird thing. Like, drums would be uh, whenever I watch like videos of like really cool drummers, I'm like, that's the coolest fucking. Yeah, shit. when you can just sit down and imme- the, yeah, there's no lag time between them sitting down and immediately being like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wailing on us. Yeah, if you if you watch like old Black Sabbath videos and yeah. you just watch the drummer, it's the most amazing shit ever. He's just like <laughs> this weird like giant hippie that's like playing. Oh, that's the, like the, when, when I watch like, like, crazy Keith- jazz drums to metal. Dude, you ever watch like Keith Moon shit on the Who? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. That shit is wild. Dude, are you guys familiar with that band, the Grimace Federation? Yes. Yeah. In Philly. Their drummer is bananas. I saw them live at Mercury Lounge like in 2005. Right. That dude. Like, I, I just watched him for like two hours playing drums. That's so a, holy shit. Yeah. What's the name? Samples of shit out of them. Aesop. Yeah, they did songs together. A lot. With, with a lot. Yeah. Like all of his albums. Yeah, That's why I've heard that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. And then his second question is: What comic book movie, past or future, <laughs> would you love to be in, and what character would you play? Wow. Damn. There's so many choices for me. I feel bad. I'm so out of the loop on <sighs> all these questions. I uh, I don't I don't know anything about comic books. I saw Deadpool. I, I, that shit was funny. With Deadpool, I'm right there with you, pretty much. So you gonna uh, be Deadpool? Uh, Deadpool's a great. Uh, pull. I mean, they had to get sure, rid of yeah, like yeah, that TJ, to... whatever his name is, guy. So you could always take his role. TJ Miller. TJ Miller. TJ Miller. Yeah. He's... So they need somebody to play that bartender. <laughs> yeah. He got canceled right into a bed of money that he's still oh, sleeping on. Yeah. yeah. And and Silicon Valley he got kicked off of. Yeah. Um. I try. Who would I? Wait. So I I I replace somebody in a superhero movie? Is that what he's saying? You, or it could be like a. It could be any comic book movie, past or present. Movies. You know, or I mean, future, future or past, like something that hasn't even come out yet or even been thought about yet. Okay, um, no. I would do. Um, fuck, I would have. I would have to be in the the Marvel injection of X Men because it hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. And then I would be. What do, what, what does that mean? Is 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 X Men not Marvel? Well, because it was Fox, and then Fo- Mar- Disney bought Fox. So what does it mean to that Marvel injection of Met? Of because now they're going to put X Men in the MCU, which hasn't been. Okay. It's been a Mar. It's been on Fox since like two thousand. That's what I like was wondering. Deadpool. So it's going to be a crossover thing. Yes, yeah, like Deadpool is going to be okay. in the Marvel <laughs> universe now cool, cool, and all cool. that shit. Uh, I would be an X Men. I would be. Um, I would be Mister Sinister. I'd be uh, Nathaniel Essex. He's he's a great villain. He's fucking hilarious. He's evil. He's got an ill beard. He's got like a red diamond in his head and he clones people. Great name. Okay. Where's that from? Which comic book is that? From? Uh X-Men. 
Mr. Oh, Sinister. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then there was a turntable is from the executioners named Mr. Sinister. And their their name used to be X-Men before they nice. changed it up. So there you go. I'd be Mr. Sinister. So I would be um Harvey Picar in American Splendor. What the hell already happened? Yeah. Oh, you I said okay. pastor. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're perfect. Yeah. Yes. You've mentioned Harvey a lot. That's a great movie. I, I like to watch him. I haven't seen that movie great in is. years. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. And his his books are just amazing. I yeah, can't is, remember. Is, is that Giamatti's best role? Yeah. It's a big, they're all, all Giamatti's roles are his best roles. I, I mean, think that's why the parts. I think his best role is the one where the person was filming him on the subway. What was that? He like starts wilding on somebody? No, somebody was just filming him reading and he was like, are you having fun? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was just like, it was real like, he didn't lose his mind. He was just like, why? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing this for? <laughs> oh, man. Giamatti. That dude. I love that dude. He's great. All right. So the next question from Pete Bone six, uh, 76. What's up, Pete? Are you less likely to check for an MC's new material once they've started acting in movies or TV? And a hmm. follow up do rappers become worse once they start acting? Hell no, to both. Hmm. Why would I start so they checking don't... less? Well, uh, no, yeah. I wouldn't start checking less. I would only start checking less once I started disliking it. And mm-hmm. No, they wouldn't become worse. They would only become worse if they became worse. It would have nothing to do with the movie shit, I don't think. I, mm. I don't know. That's a weird... How many have crossed over like that? Like, there hasn't been, like, too, too many like that. Um, I mean, the, the ISIS. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like Beth those were Red. very parallel. Those the, your good points, but those were very... Happened at the same time, it feels uh, like. I mean, yeah. com- I'm just com- thinking of people was... that like train. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. 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 Will um, Smith, yeah, true, true. Common, yeah. we talked about common on our common. yeah, common. common's common's acting career fizzled out. He's yeah, um, he sucks. Um, red and meth, you know, red didn't last long. Meth, nah. meth did, uh, did. Yeah. Fredro um, Star from Onyx, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it. That's definitely um, I'm trying to think who else there would be. Sticky Mashiari Fingers was Ali. in something too. He was in Blade on Spike yeah, Network. That's right. <laughs> uh, Sticky. Yeah, um, Mashiari Ali was in uh, Hyro. Hyro, yeah, Marshall, yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Um. So wait, do, is the question: Do we think they're worse? Yeah. So are do are you less likely worse? to check a rapper's new material once they become an, they start acting in movies or TV? I'll go the other way. If someone acts in movies and TV and then puts out a rap album, I'm not listening to that shit. Mm. Like That's if I know you rare, as an yeah. actor first, yeah, I'm not yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. We're like a yeah, ball player, yeah. like Dame Lillard. He he's a basketball yeah. player, but he raps. I've never listened to his rap shit. Never. Or, you, like, you, were, you both were talking about how much you love John Cena's album though when he dropped. <laughs> well, Murray's <laughs> in the video. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's an, a Gibbs. Gib, Franny Gibbs just went into, and I watched that show that he's on. Um, oh, really? What show is he on? He's on a show on Peacock. I signed up for Peacock for a very specific reason that we don't need to get into, but <laughs> okay. there's a show called Bust Down on Peacock, and he plays a major role. Oh, fucking huh. hilarious. He's a funny dude, on and he doesn't either. play any other character but to be described as Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. I'm, I'm into it. I mean, he's, um, I'm still okay. listening to his albums. You know who actually yeah, did a I, great I don't think there's anybody that went into acting that I was still really checking for outside of maybe Ice Cube. Ludic- Ludacris. Did you check him? Really? Have you really been checking for Ludacris hard these past? I mean, he isn't what I knew. Yeah, by exactly. the time he was acting, I wasn't checking for Ludacris. By the time he was absolutely being a masterpiece in Fast and Furious series. It's True. His yeah, he kind of just let, he You know out. who? Buster Rhymes. I did okay. listen to his stuff he after dabbled. he went into movies. And Halloween. He, he was in Halloween, Finding Forrester. He was in Higher Learning. Higher Learning. Yo, he was fucking incredible. That. Hey, yo, white boy. Yo, that movie's <laughs> fucking great. I mean, Drake hasn't come up, but he's the he's the other way, right? He was an acting person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love me some Drake, even though the Sixers just busted his bitch-ass team's ass. And I may be wrong, so I want to put say that before i say this but was tupac an actor first or was he a dancer first he was he, he was, was everything except a gangster rapper first he was a poet yeah. he was a thespian he, he, was he, a he, he, he got his in now. through dancing yeah where he yes. made most of his connections for that would led to the rest of it yeah yes. i don't think his acting started until his move until his rapping started though so after dancing true yeah 
And then, of course, there was uh, Cameron from Young Black Teenagers in House Party 2. But then Cameron from His Dipset own movie. paid him full. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And Cam- Cameron from that weird movie where he went after like sexual predators. Oh, kill a season. Oh, wow. Where he, season, pissed, he pissed on the dude and was like, no homo. He pulled his dick out. was pissing on him. <laughs> Cameron was very proud of that movie at the time. I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, no wow. homo. <laughs> oh, he's pissing on it, dude. Oh, great. All right. that question. So, okay. So what do we got next? Hold on. I'm just deleting these as we go through so we don't have them in there. Okay. Um, are you underwhelmed by It's Almost Dry? Is paper? I don't know what that is. Push it, the new Push It T album. Oh yeah, I guess I am. Um, who, who asked the question? This is uh DJ Dilla at James underscore Whitcomb. Yeah, what's up, Dilla? DJ Dilla from By your uh, reaction, UK. it sounds like you didn't even listen to it, Tim. No, I, I mean, all right. So I don't give Dilla, did you? Push it tea. Yes, I love. I love Push It T. I I I like him for what he he's a very specific kind of dude where he. He gets to be the the traditional East Coast rapper in a world where like we're 15 years past that being viable on a major label. And so it's they're like, as hell. like everyone allows him in that world to do it because he dresses like in dope high end fashion. But he just makes like like luxury East Coast rap and rapping about the same shit. So I'm all about it. The new album with me and uh, Shasta Mighty Healthy and my man colleague on on Twitter We've agreed that it's oh, I weird. Saw this. Yes, because the opening you song is you restructure the yes. album. It's and not can a I good add intro. To it? If you surprise drop that album, don't even fucking put a single out with Jay Z. Mm. Don't put any. Imagine that album just drops. Everyone knew he was putting out an album, right? So just drop it. The I impact agree. that it would have had. I was. I'm a big Pusha fan, so right. I overhyped it myself because they overhyped it. I agree. That's a good and point. And the sequencing is. It's really bad. Garbage. Like the song where, where he flips the DJ Shadow six days joint. Like you you have to open the album with that. Yeah. It's so, it's so moody and dramatic. It's crazy. Yeah. It's it's a very, I mean, Daytona, it's cool. Daytona is way better. Daytona is better. And, and King Push Darkest Before Dawn. That's way better, too. It's crazy. Yeah. So and my name is my name. I love that shit. So, yeah, this is probably I'm my least huge, favorite. I'm a huge fan. There's going to be songs that I love and listen to a lot. But album wise, they blew it. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely like cherry pick it on a playlist type of album, but not front to back. So there you go. Those are our feelings. Okay. And Alaska has And then none. his follow up question was Is Paper Mache by Masai Bay the most slept on and under discussed LP beat that there is? I wish Castro was here for this. Uh, I could play it through if you guys want to hear it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, put not it over. Familiar, I'm not you familiar. I'm not familiar by chair. name. Oh, what is it? What is Alaska? You just got to give me screen share. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, here you go. Multiple go to, participants. Yeah. All right, boom. Why, why you play that for so to blow Dove's mind? I'm gonna just get get a line in Google very quickly. Give me one second. Okay. Do it. Okay. Line can you oh, can you hear this? I can uh, see it. Press play. All right. Yep. I remember this song. Yeah, shit is crazy. crazy. Peace from I bring to you good news. No equipment's at a minimum in some of the beats. You will possibly hear what I could use. When I get it, you are gonna need a miracle. Miracle. Not every say, miracle. Let me find prominent verities. Feasibly mentioned within a document. Wear some habits. Outlive the cabbage. And if you ain't live, Fizz, how will you manage it? It's a regular for beta on my side mount. But every Yeah. That shit is fire. What's the question? Is it the most like? Is it the best like LP beat that nobody talks about? Oh, okay. I, I I didn't. I forgot the question. That shit was hard. Yeah, shit's hard as fuck. I didn't mean to cut it off too much. Sorry, but I'm oh, it's okay. I wasn't gonna play it the whole way through. So, <laughs> and I feel like I remember it. It also is very, very um, of an LP beat for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I think yeah. Offspring for Dell is the most overlooked LP mm. beat ever. Damn, side bagels way. way yeah, he's back, dope. Bro. Holy it, it, it's definitely like of the LP school of like, here's this dope rapper that I'm going to like hit with a dope beat. It's yeah. not going to be a beat that's going to be on my record or on a company flow record, but it's still a dope beat. Right. That would have fit on the like, flow record. Mm-hmm. You think it would have? It would have. Yeah. Yeah. They would have yeah. put that in and, and rapped on it just as good. Yeah. I think so. Hmm. Yeah. And oh, then, and, yeah. And then shouts to the next movement. They have Masai Bay on this week talking jungle yeah, brothers. Dope. Yeah. So cool. 
So I, I would go with um, Nightwork is the most under discussed. I feel like on this outside show, of our we, circle, nobody talks about that. Beat. True, because on this show we've that? talked about it a lot. It's the Sir Menelik joint from uh, yeah. Sound Bomb and One. Yeah, my, my favorite LP beat and song, and he I don't even know if he made the beat. It's from a compilation. I can't remember the name of the compilation. It was a song uh, with Camus, uh, Oxycontin. Oh yeah. Wow. Is that Def Jokes Presents? It's one of them joints? It's one of them, I think, yeah. And it's this long, drawn-out thing. It's not really a rap song. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. Oh, my God. That is my one of my favorite, favorite fucking songs that LP and, and both of them have ever made. Uh, you know, you know. speaking of compilations, my, my shit was him and Aesop, Train Buffer. Off the um, Urban I Renewal joint. That, that yeah. beat is <laughs> stupid. That shit's wild. I love that joint. I'm going with Ox. I think it's just called Oxycontin. I think it is. Yeah, it's, I think it's on one. Of yeah, the it is Oxycontin. Shows. Yeah. All right. So, so we got two questions from from Dan O at Free Music Empire. What's up, Dan? The first one is: Which TV character are each of us the most like? Oh shit! You ever seen High Maintenance? Yes. Yeah. Great have. show. <laughs> love it. <laughs> And I know what you're referring to. <laughs> oh God, there's too many shows, bro. Yeah. God damn. Oh. Uh, it's, in my own mind, and from and from, from a f- purely fantasy aspect, it's Raylan Givens from Justified, played by Timothy Oliphant. Okay. Because I was gonna name my son after him. Like that's how much I love that shit. Oliphant is be, great, he's and he's great God. in that show. He's the god. They're bringing it back on FX, which I, fucking tickles I fell me. off, but I love. I know it's good. Oh god, it's the greatest. The last, Deadwood, the last scene Deadwood. was, yeah, Deadwood. Oh, he was great on this Bullock. Yeah, he was great. He was good. He was dope on a Santa Clarita Diet on Netflix with him and Drew Barrymore. I saw that too. Yeah, That's he was great. Better than expected. <laughs> it's like this high energy, yeah, like metro, like fucking not real estate expected agent. to be good, and it is. <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> he's fucking gold, bro. I like that guy. I'll ask you, you be That's Cliff Clavin from Cheers? Nah, man. I'm going to be Judy Gemstone. <laughs> Judy Gemstone. <laughs> right. Un, un, that woman steps outside of herself to, to play that role. I, it's un, it's unreal. That should win every award you could give. Every award. Like that. She is so funny yeah. in every single time she's on camera. It doesn't matter what. Yeah. Uh, that shit. Yeah. Unreal. She was amazing in Vice Principals as well. She was on that show? Yeah. I gotta go back the, to it. That show is so I do so too because I don't remember funny. her from that show, but <sighs> I remember uh, the guy with the name uh, who's in both. Um, come on, not Danny McBride, but the guy, the, Baby uh, Billy. Yeah, Baby Billy. He's got that name. Yeah. Got my Walter man. Goggins. Walter my Goggins. Guy. Yeah. Uh, my second <laughs> choice as from fucking Justified, Boyd Crowder. I'd be him too. Man. All right, and his second question is: If you could save one album in all of hip hop history. From being bad as it is, mm. which album would that be? Fuck. I don't even how I don't know how to conceive. I would save not. Nah, I mean, uh, not us. I would save J Kingdom Come mm. because it was such a buildup when he first retired with the Black Album, and Black Album is pretty fucking cool. And then there was a zillion remixes of the Black Album. And then he was the head of Def Jam. And then he was only doing a couple of features. And they were big. Like, everything was an event. And then Kanye took his place as, like, the big Mm -hmm. artist on Rockefeller. And then the Kingdom Come shit was, like, he took the beat from Just Blaze. I used to go to Just Blaze's MySpace page to listen to that beat. Just the, the Super Freak flip from Rick James. And so he like got that beat that was available on MySpace for a year. And he had, you know, the the fucking um the rump shaker sample with the shaft in Africa. Oh, that's uh, sax. Like he had everything lined up. He could have picked where so how do you how wants. do you save it? You take out the trash and put better songs in, I guess, right? Yeah, I, it's just it, but... it's just I mean, he he released it during the worst era of hip hop history. So even Jay couldn't couldn't be unscathed, but it's like there's ways to navigate that. Like, there's not enough Kanye. Kanye is on top of the world. Kanye is not really on the album at all. Just Blaze gives him a beat. Yeah, but he also shouldn't have been fucking around with, like, the dude that sings Yellow. 
uh, the dude from Coldplay. Oh, Coldplay. So, oh like, Chris Martin. Like Coldplay well, Jay, I mean, that's debatable, right? What 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 Jay Z's goals were? Then he should have been. Well, he had that song like '30s the new '20 and '40s yeah. new '30. It was like. It was, it was cool. him like trying to age corny while also is, it was corny, but it, so it was like it, it was like if you go to Home Goods and they have those signs in the back yeah. that like that yeah. like you know Midwest housewives hanging like in, the, in their bedroom. <laughs> all of his all of his album songs were those. He has like Dr. Dre, yeah. but all every Dre beat yeah. sucks. God don't make no mess. You got to think about what his plan was during that era and what what came next. Like. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. like it's just he has like the song "Lost One," that Dre did the beat. That beat is fucking nothing. Then an- another beat, thirty yeah. something with Dre sucks. Trouble. I don't even know that beat. Minority well, Report. We don't want to have a conversation Gosh. about Dre being the most overrated producer. It's horrible, rap, though, right? He's he when he works with other artists, he like doesn't. It's it's never good synergy. Like I really liked Compton, but that was his solo album, so I feel like. I expected a certain thing, but he sure. doesn't have mm. good synergy with other artists. He's like overrated yeah. when it comes to that. Like, good point. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I would I would fix that album because it's just it's just not like no one talks about it and it's nothing. But it has like he has just Blaze all over it, and then it stops. It stops having anything. So I'm still I've been trying to think pretty hard this whole time, but I'm not, I'm coming up kind of blank. Do you have anything, Alaska? Uh, Ethiopes? Um, is that what you just said? Billy Woods, Ethiopes? Yeah, you should fix that. How would you, yeah. how would you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would put Cannabis's album. Oh, I, I feel would, like yeah, we'd fix his career, every... right? Like, yeah. you, well, you would fix but, I mean, career, if you could you mean... fix one album in the history of hip hop and make it not bad. I mean, yeah, like that's that's the goal. I think that changes the whole course of hip hop if you change that record. And sure. Fucking bangs. I agree. That's a good. Can point. I bus? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> See, I, I, I guess I didn't dislike it as much as most people. Like, I just was he was like, my, he's like, why I rap. That, that <laughs> motherfucker is why I rap, bro. I that, mean, him, I love Buckingham Palace to this day. It's a great song. Uh, yeah. But that album was a disappointment. It's, it's. A, I mean, we, we had the cannabis episode with Vic Spencer. We, yeah. we go at length yeah. about it. I mean, the BT passed over and the feature. I mean, it was just. It's a disaster, but yeah, yeah. I, di- I didn't want to keep piling on cannabis because I love him. I have a big special place in my heart for him, but yes, um, that that came after um, Purple Haze. Oh, uh, Crime Pays, Cameron, no, Kill a Season. I'd fix Kill a Season. Yeah, that's not a good album. Purple Haze was so good to me. <laughs> Purple um, Haze is great. <laughs> Purple, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people. The people who know know. There's a lot of people who don't agree. And I respect that opinion, but Purple Haze is un- an unbelievable triumph in so hip hop history. It's so and, good. And uh, Killer Season was such a letdown to me that I just yeah. kind of fell off from there. And they really pimped the shit out of Killer Season too. Like, well, because of how goddamn good Purple Haze, bro. Down and out with Kanye. Get them girls. Pull album. Oh Pull my album. god. Pull album. I'm getting money. Oh my god. That's just stupid. You get shot at, homie. I do the shooting. Him, 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 and Jim Jones together. I think maybe Jim Jones takes the cake for this, but change the ad lib and dub game forever. Of yes, Ooh. forever. From that point forward, yeah. the two of them changed it, and people were like, "Why are their dubs and ad libs so fucking loud?" And it's because they're so fucking good. That's so why. Funny. And like, yeah. <laughs> It was like them and like Jeezy. Jeezy, be- that became like the star of every song yeah, was the Jeezy. Jeezy. Yeah. Turned it all the way up. They put it louder yep. than the verse. They were like, it. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like they were like triple track the ad lib, but like single track the vocals. It's great. Right, so let's take two more questions and we'll take a break because the, right, the, the second one I want to ask, I think is a really good question. Okay, cool. This one's good too, but um, like the other one I think is funny as shit. So, um, so Spinach wants to know, Start, bench, or cut, which I guess is similar to fuck, marry, kill. Right. Tash, tame one, or Elzai. So who are you going to start? Who are you going to bench? And who are you going to cut? Bow out. Because I just don't know enough about uh, the other two. I know tame, but. Well, Tash from the Alcoholics. Not familiar enough oh, to admit wow, to okay. it, and I'm not, and I, I know who they are, but I'm not familiar enough yeah. with their music other than Tame, and I would, you know, so. All okay. right, start in Tame. Um, I would start Tash. I just love Tash for years. Um, yeah. West Coast Red Man to me. Uh, I would start Tash, and he said the second one is Bench. Yeah, Bench. I would Bench Elzai. 
I had a really mm-hmm. big affinity for Elzai from like 2000 to like 2010 or 11. I loved him deeply. Um, and then I would just tame like I he's he's the guy like I just kept wanting to wow yeah, me yeah. with a full yeah. album. And, it, and mm-hmm. outside of Leak Brothers and a couple artifacts joints, like it's just been a lot of uh, empty promises for me and tame. But I think he's just fucking amazing. I just I just have there's just nothing I could rely on. With the ball of energy that couldn't focus seemed like to get. Um, yeah, he was so good. His voice. Did you have personal yeah. connections to him at all? Nah, oh, never. No? Never did. I mean, I met him a couple times, but that was about it. OK. Um, what about you, Alaska? I would probably go Tash, Tame, and Elzai. You would, you would bench Elzai. No, you cut him. No, I would cut, cut him. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't see you as an Elzai guy. I, no, I like Elzai. I like really? Elzai. Elzai is dope. I just dope. don't know He's enough really about dope. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think you know, like he didn't do a song with Nubian Crackers, <laughs> okay. and Tame One did. You know what I mean? Like back in like. 91 like I, I had that single and i used to like play it until it, my tape deck exploded and it was all because of tame like tame's line like Wait, i'm stocky auto. i'm stocky auto. and cocky i rock a vest like chachi like that i was like, <laughs> i'm sold on that dude immediately oh wait was that an artifact song it was an artifact song over nubian crackers production what the fuck is nubian crackers nubian yeah, crackers was like this either. production crew i've from, never heard um, of this shit oh uh, let me find it for you newark oh, we're uh, I don't know where the fuck they were from. I feel like they're from like White Plains or something. Nubian Crackers. That's amazing. Yeah, so just they had like, a song. Was it just like artifacts. two white dudes or what? Yeah, two white dudes. Yeah. Um, I don't really know much about them. They But they used to drop singles back in like we the, the never early 90s. Noob, I've so, never heard of these dudes. Yeah, so these are Nubian Crackers. We're two producers. <laughs> Prince Quick Mix. <laughs> okay. And the other one was The Undercover Brother. So Prince Quick Mix, his name oh, is come on. Man Manuel Napori. So he might be yeah, he might be like Indian, white. maybe. Right. Um, and then undercover brother is Victor Victor Piaget or Pajneri. Oh my god. Yeah. So they're, they're like, aliens. Like, get that right? shit done. We get the songs done. They Yo, get the shit done. So like aliases. so this was you got this. This is the kind. This is what all their records look like. Hold on, I'm gonna pull this up for you, and you can see it. Dog, real quick. Their, their aliases are chocolate bamboo and ganja posse. It's incredible. Best. <laughs> well, I'm gonna share screen so you can see this shit. Be crackers. I never heard. So of this, these all their artwork looked like this. This is what everything looked like. Can you Slamming see that? records. No, now that you show me this record and say tame one, I feel like I've seen that before. Here and here's before. here's the song. I'll, I'll drop it in the mix so hopefully people can hear. it. Nubian uh, Crackers, right Slamming Records presents. I think there were a bunch of these. They were indie, dude. They were indie the fuck out. Wow. Does this have tame on it? Yeah, it's, it's the artifacts. It was like the first wow. record of artifacts. Ah, uh, yo, check this, brothers coming up here from New Jerusalem, out of Sensei. Yo, check it out, same word. You sleep, you be ass out, G. Word up. So yo, we gonna run it down like this. On some artifacts, it's bust it. Lick off a shot when I hip hop like hops, got snapping like pop rocks. The tame one is top notch. The yeah, artifact with that tame, I love it. Is a badass. Mm. Talk trash and get your black ass blasted mad fast. Spay like Jack, super fly like the soundtrack. So yo, check the stacks of the Jerusalem attack. With snaps and battle rap, I bounce like a Cadillac Fleetwood. The hood bust caps like Eastwood. Right here, like sneakers shake your head like a peeper. I've been known for smoking cheaper since the day they called it reaper. Ooh, drop your lip and grab your chin, the nigga freaking on his sneak tip. I'm flipping through my lips, then it's secret. But be yeah, tame active at all? did an album with Dell a couple years ago. Really? Yeah, it's with that group Parallel Thought, those producers. Oh, not, yeah, yeah. It's not, that. not good. Yeah, that, that's not good. Yeah. And they've done like dope ass shit with Tree and I forget who else. And the shit with Tame and Dell is like not hidden. Yo, no. Tree, like just the rapper Tree? I, yes, I love him. Because that so dude, much. not a lot of people, yo, more people need to know that dude is fucking. That dude is really fucking dope. He well, he had that run in like the 2010s in Chicago, Bogger. and he was big. And then, um, if he talks about on that album, we grown now, like how everything changed, and then he took a step back, and then now he owns like an apartment complex and is teaching his kids how to be property managers and shit. He's a shit. All right, so so let's let's hit this question, and then we'll take a quick break. Bow. And this is from Jeff is uh, is at Jeff R 2022. 
Okay. And, and this question to me is amazing. <laughs> so you could either watch Machine Gun Kelly do karaoke <laughs> every night for the rest of your life or join him one night and make it stop. That's so easy. I would join. I would have. How could I do that two, two, even two nights? I, I <laughs> have a physical. I don't even want to dislike someone as much as I dislike our machine gun Kelly. Like, so, <laughs> and, and I, and I might even, I never do karaoke. I'm too insecure for karaoke. Oh, it's I, the shit. I never, oh, I never do that shit. Right. But I could not watch. Are you kidding me? That he made that too easy for me. Um, okay. Yeah. I would do, I would obviously pick the latter and I would have to do. The, the greatest karaoke song ever, which is Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah, there's the so many one. parts yeah. to it. It's the greatest. You know what I mean? It's like, a great one. Yeah. What's well, the shortest song karaoke song? In love. Now I think we're falling <laughs> apart. Like that shit is the so best. Good. You know what I mean? Like there's just so it's so many pieces of it. And I need you now to think. Like I would also, do it. the logistics you. of oh, could you imagine the rest of your life seven days a week? Well, I got oh. to set aside that five minutes. I oh. know, like he's he's like check child. it out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but like to him, it's like a serious thing where he's like singing like uh, "Creep" by Radiohead. Oh, like I'm, so, he's I'm jumping so on tables and shit like that, oh, like spilling people's night. drinks. One night, he's desking, desking. Oh, one time, I had I did I did karaoke with with uh, people from my old job, and my wife and I went. It's like this Japanese spot in Philly. And they have like the karaoke rooms and shit. And me and my wife did uh, Scream by Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. And no one in the wow. room knew what the fuck the song was. <laughs> and they had wow. no clue what we were doing. With such That's injustice, amazing. though, it makes you want to scream. They were like, oh, okay. So they had no clue what we were doing. It was great. <laughs> Father, please have so, mercy. I mean, I would, I would pick the same exact thing as you guys, but I think it would be fun to do it. Sure. One like, night, yeah. One, one night, night, yeah. I mean, one I'm not trying to spend no. time with that dude more than five minutes in my life. Exactly. But exactly. He definitely he was really good like as Tommy Lee in the dirt. Oh yeah, he was good in um Bird yeah. Bird Box Blind Box. And, there you and go. He Let's see. In, um, he was good in SLC Punk too. Oh my Speaking god. Speaking of rappers turning actors, excuse me. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. This is news to me that is kind of like a little groundbreaking. As there was an there was a sequel to. One of the greatest yeah, movies dude. ever made. Shouts to Matthew Lillard. Yo, without quite, yo, Doug, we're going to have to have you come back on and we're just going to do like a film watch of that movie because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Not a, not enough people have seen that movie, but I'm, I'm, I don't, I feel like maybe I want to erase the fact that you said there's a sequel, especially since Machine Gun Kelly is in it. And have you seen this movie? I, yes. I, no, 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 peep it. I saw the box at Blockbuster a zillion times and was always going to, pick it up and then we get and i would i would rent like buffalo 66 instead no, right man and no, then it gotta, would be on slc punk man it would be on like ifc or sundance and it'd always be like in the middle yeah, and i was always like i can't thing, just yeah. jump in this movie in the middle nope and then you know 15 years go by and then, i'll find you know. a link for you i'll find a link oh that'd be great i appreciate oh, it's it. such, it's such a great movie yeah, so, cool. so the just, story is for slc2 is um bob had knocked up trish before he died well, you just ruined the fucking movie for me. Thanks. I don't even know it's what he's like, talking about. I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Specifics well, and, like anyway, it's like I, classic Bob move. Fuck classic Trish. Bob. Anyway, yeah, he knocked up Trish and it's about his kid. What year did the second one come out? Second one came out 2016. It's called Punk's nah, Day. There's no, way it's good. Punk there's no way it's good. There's no, it, way no, it's not. It's okay. not. We're going to pretend. Um, like but I, I interviewed the, the director when I was running syphil.com nice. uh-huh. because there was like, it was done for years before it dropped. Okay. Oh, he's, and, like, um, he's like mad we young in the movie it. machine gun Kelly. Yeah. He was mad young. This was like, I mean, this was probably filmed. Devin Sawa's in it again. Devin Sawa. Wow. See, you got to get him though. If it's going to be a, yeah, you got to. Yeah. Wow. John, the mod is in it again. All the, all the, all the big I'm names the are the back, acid, man. The acid scene from that movie is ground. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, a really great movie. So, all right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back. We've got a lot more questions, guys. So, all right, we all can right, go. Cool. Um, Listeners, check it out. Zilla Rocker. Listen, as a shorty, I was playing in the front yard of a crib and I fell down and I bumped my head. And then somebody helped me up and asked me if I bumped my head. And I said, yeah. So then they said, oh, so that means we're going we gonna to switch it up on them. And I said, yeah, a- Andrew. Andrew is the greatest. 
And knowing as a shorty, I was always told that if I ain't gonna be part of the greatest, I gotta align with the greatest myself. And that's Andrew. The Rain Knows What Is Doing album, available now. Cassettes are sold out, but we got CDs, beanies, dad hats, mugs. It's cracking. $3pistol.com for fans of Beck, Evidence, Buck 65, Dap Tone Records. If you're with it, spread love. If people want the wild shit, we're going to give you some more. Andrew, the rain knows what it's doing. Available now. And we're back. Boom. We got a question from Uranium Kitsy, a.k.a. Kits Wilman. Sure. And he wants to know, or she wants to know. He or she. They. If you could eliminate one sound from hip-hop production, what would it be? Oh, examples like the cowbell, reverse cymbals, acoustic guitar, etc. Wow, so many I mean, choices. Well, the, well so many choices. But of the sounds he threw out of there, my initial gut reaction was like acoustic guitar. It would <laughs> yeah. suck if that was gone. But like when when I heard that, when that hit my ears, I'm like, there's not enough that there's I feel not like many good that acoustic would hurt. Guitar yeah, that would hurt the overall oeuvre. Yeah. You know, you can't take point. You would lose like sometimes I rhyme slow, sometimes I rock quick. Mm. It's about it it. one of my favorite but songs. It does, ever. but it's a great song. You might, you might Wyclef also lose songs that down. I really like. There's, There's a lot of Wyclef, a lot I of like Wyclef. Carnival. I like Carnival. Oh, the Carnival's a mess. Oh, Carnival's a great record, man. The that whole album is amazing to me. It's uh, such a good record. Yeah, yeah. My my first instinct was uh, the entire Swizz Beats era. Just that entire so like the sound. Triton sound, the Casio Triton like <laughs> preset, like money so cash funny. hose beat, worst beat of all fucking see, Rough I, Riders anthem is one of the yeah, worst beats all. of all time. I, can't rock I it loved all that shit. I love yeah. Those all beats are fucking terrible. Like his beats. Now I grew to appreciate him in like the early two thousands. Like bring him out when he like changed his style to be like whistles in the background and like him screaming and doing hooks. I love him. I love Swizz. So the production alone <laughs> is corny if you separate it from the energy of the tracks and the rappers yeah. that he got on them like dmx is loud amazing. enough and the energy is there the songs are incredible yeah, and like like exactly. dmx doing like what when are they gonna yeah. run what are we gonna vote you could do that on any Yo, listen, beat and it would be amazing it's not there's a that lot beat. of old pharrell and neptune's beats that if you separate out the lyrics and just listen to the instrumentals they borderline on corny because of the, oh, yeah. the choices well, of sounds that they use. Well, Dove, you know what they were going for? That what whole the run? vibe. Yeah. They were going for Steely Dan. Sure. Yeah. Whatever they were going so for. So it, it has cheesiness <laughs> embedded. Like, that's just yeah. how it's going to be. <laughs> um, there, what was, uh, you do, Alaska? What was the, I'm what going was the DJ Khaled's sound? voice. You say <laughs> Ka- Khaled? You called him Khaled? Yeah, Khaled's voice. Khaled. <laughs> Khaled. Khaled. Yeah. TJ Khaled. We the best. Another one. His oh, voice is yeah, so embedded, is what I'm though. Removing. It's so. Another one. I mean, all he does now is like what everyone does in their 40s, where they just take all the fucking rap songs from 97 yeah. and just put Rihanna on it. And then just put it like a crab beat. Is a, is a movie producer version of a hip hop producer. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, he's a marketer. He's a marketing. Um, he puts money up and gets money back. And puts makes people connect at lunch and leaves you know what i mean like wow. he, he, yeah that's he, he's a big fan he, he's a big fan of the word synergy you know what yeah. I mean? like that's- yeah. <laughs> uh so i could lose the voice it would disappoint me a little um i'm sticking with acoustic guitar are right, you go acoustic guitar alaska goes it with hurts, voice. it does hurt though i go with 98 to 04 swing <laughs> The whole Jesus everything Christ. he did. I, I that, gotta go. Not, I can't rock Sorry. that at all. No, I can't rock with that either. I love the but... whole shiny suit era. I, un, un, no, no, I love the shiny I, suit I, era. Yeah. I just don't like Swizz. And from that time, I, all every sound he picked, I hated it. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so Garfunkel, aka Simpleton underscore prods, uh, wants to know better rap city commercials, Sprite or St. Ides? Sprite. Sprite. Oh, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Wow, you had a lot of this is an angst, age thing. This is an age thing. It is an age thing, yeah. This but no, it's Saint Ives it's was the also, first one. It's also it's also the the amount of content and the level of rapping on the the commercials. Yeah, but the sprite like, one there's, has there's Nas not and sprite AZ. Yeah, right, but, the, but they there's Nas and they AZ doing the wild style when they shit. came out. By the time we saw those, those people were already superstars to us. True. The Saint Ives shit is more embedded in like the original. 
No, I think it's like, backwards. <laughs> I think you got it backwards because St. Ives had like Cube, Snoop, Wu Tang. St. Ives have Biggie. St. Ives had Biggie. Didn't they had Biggie, they? right? Yeah. Sprite Saint had Ives like mixtapes. Yeah, like people so, make mixtapes out of their commercials. Nobody does that. To me, like, the St. Ives should just out. miss me. I think because I'm I'm like a little bit younger than than it could be. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm the old man here, right? Yeah, so like, resident, I'm 38 resident. though. I'm not I'm that 39. much younger than you. Yeah, I'm that's 39. what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. We're only we're only a little bit. Uh, <laughs> look, the Pete Rock and CL Sprite Joint, crazy. Nas. Grand Pooba, Nas and AZ. That's that era of the Sprite shit to me is the best. Not the ones that did later with the fucking Five Deadly Venoms <laughs> and Voltron <laughs> so and fucking bad. Karate. No. I like how I want, Vince Staples is the only guy who like recently rocked with Sprite. And he talks about Sprite all the time. You know, they Twitter. asked He's him in that. an interview just a few days ago, like, have you ever had a Sprite? And he was like, nah. And the guy was like, what do you mean? He was like, fuck what I have a Sprite for. He's like, you can't say that. You work for them. He's like, yeah, I work for them. I don't have to drink it. <laughs> like, Dude, he, people will be like, new Vince Staples is trash. He's like, brother, I feel you. I hope you feel better. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> enjoy Sprite. <laughs> That's what he says every tweet. Go yep. enjoy Sprite. Vince Staples is the only uh, good personality on the level that he's at. He's he he exists to be famous off GQ and features every two years now and be like podcast and he's great. The new album. So here, here's who Sprite. I mean, who's saying I had you ready? God damn it! What's this shitty website? I so know they sad. had Biggie. That was a big deal. They had the yeah. Lynch Mob. Sure. Wow. Eric B. and Rakim. Right. Cypress Hill. Right. Their commercial was amazing. I remember. It was that like one. Kill a Man, Cypress Hill. Ice Cube and the Ghetto Boys, MC8 and DJ Pooh, Ice Cube and EPMD, Tupac okay. and Snoop, Wu Tang, Cube by himself. What years Biggie, were? Th- and then another Snoop solo job. What years were oh, wait, these? These were like ninety four. So what is the check looking like that in ninety four? Probably oh, wasn't like, that great. Not, probably I mean, like five. Well, was a startup. Yeah, it was like five, possibly. It's not going like to be a lot of that's like 15 by today's standard. So it's not yeah. like, and, but all those dudes were new and, and on shitty ass major labels. Like Sprite not even, was bigger check. That's for sure. Oh, I feel sure. like it would yeah. be. Yes. But like if, if, if you're woo or biggie, like your, your label's not even giving you 15 fucking thousand dollars for your album sales. Yeah. So like and this take is a day rate. What you show up, I mean, you show up, right. you film for a day, you leave. So it's a day rate. Yeah. And you're doing maybe 12 to 16 bars. Yeah. If that, right. Probably yeah. eight. And you More have like, to get it approved. This is one of those things where you have to get it approved. Like yeah. you can't even like. <laughs> oh my god! They also had better dope, beats those, those, were, those were yeah, whatever. I, that's a draw to me. Draw. Okay. I it's mean, yeah. There's a lot of these. There's no wrong answers. Okay. It's all about the taste. firepower is there on both both brands. It is, yeah. See, when I think of the spray ones, I tend to think of like the later era shit. For some reason, like, I don't even really remember the Nas ones. Wow, they were the first ones they were, yeah. like, they were the best. Him and AZ. See, I remember like the KRS ones and stuff. Like they had KRS and MC oh, Shan. I think one. that's not nah, not those not like they're in a button. Nah, like, those there. are the ones I remember. No, nah, like like the first wave of like Sprite. It was like the Grant Hill era of Sprite when he was yeah, like a pitch man. That. All right, you missed that, bro. You look him up. Right. Grand Pooba one's crazy. All right, so we got uh, these two questions are kind of tied together. So. They're basically about like encounters with, you know, rappers or producers who are not personal friends or people that we know. But like, so the, the, the initial question is, you know, that they both ask are, you know, who are like the, the famous rappers that you like ran into in the street, rappers or producers? And then the, the, the sort of like nail on the question at the end is, what was your most like sort of awkward experience meeting somebody like that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, meeting like an established person? An established person, somebody you don't know, like you just sort of like ran into them on the street. You're like, oh shit. Oh, I got a funny for both of my so I didn't really? run it. Poison Pen ran into me literally <laughs> hard <laughs> while he was rushing out MF Doom from the BB King show. Oh, shit. Like they were like pretending like there was paparazzi out there. So they like had the jacket on him and they were rushing him into a yellow cab. And there were like a few people standing out there, but like nobody <laughs> knew where he was going to come out or whatever. And they just did it really fast. And I got like, <laughs> mm. and uh, at that same show, most deaf with yes, before he was Yassi Bay, most deaf was there. And uh, I introduced myself to him and I'm a short guy. And it was shocking to me that he was like shorter than me. He's a he's a really short guy. 
Mm. Yeah. And I, it was just like, and it made me even more awkward as I was introducing myself to him. I was like, oh, <laughs> like, well, this, is, this is weird to me. And he was wearing a fez. Mm. <laughs> Which is like a That's red top amazing. hat. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, uh, I met Army of the Pharaohs, Vinnie Paz at a strip club in Southwest Philly called Charlie's Dream. And this was the, the throwback Jersey era. So Vinnie Paz and then we're there. And I was at this strip club every fucking weekend. Like me and my <laughs> friends went every because it was cheap as shit. You could go there at like you 18, 19. Shit. Yeah, like we were all working at a wings. restaurant. We would all work in a restaurant, get done like around like 11, 30, 12, go home and shower and link back up and go to Charlie's Dream and hang out to like three, four in the morning. So I saw Vinny Paz and them there wearing like throwback like Atlanta Hawks jerseys and they were all fucking twisted there. But they were passing around an empty bottle of Moet. You know what I mean? It was it was a champagne <laughs> bottle, but it was empty and they were passing around like twisting it back, but there was nothing in it. And so I'm Amazing. sitting there. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, this is fucking Vinny Paz and Army of the Pharaohs. I'm like, I want to go say something because I was a fan of the, the Jedi Mind Tricks record at the time of uh, Violent by Design. And so I went over them before I left and I was like, yo, <laughs> I was like, yo, the song you got with Tragedy Gaddafi on Violent by Design is crazy. He was like drunk as fuck. He was like, word. I was like, yeah, all right. And I just bounced. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was wow. it. Um, you before you go, Alaska, didn't yeah. you fucking perform at that show? Didn't you guys open did, for yeah. Doom? What you were talking about, I was like, shit, I performed in that. <laughs> yeah, I saw mm, yeah. Uh, I saw you guys perform, and they threw the apple across the stage. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and one quarter in his first mouth. try yeah That's crazy that was that was uh we used to do that backstage it was like just something fun to do yeah when had giant chompers man yep i remember that show yeah they look like tombstones in his mouth <laughs> um so so mine was either uh buckshot oh <laughs> uh i ran into him in union square once Talk about small rappers like, very short yo that's what i'm saying really Dude See, was i wouldn't like, expect that he was like child size. What? Like, like legit, like, like looked like he could be in sixth grade. Crazy. Buckshot Shorty. That's his name. Yeah. And then um, I ran into Prodigy on the street. Mm. And um, like I, I passed him and I was like, oh shit, you're Prodigy. Like I yelled it at the top of my lungs. I was like, <laughs> fuck. And like gave me a handshake and like bounced out. And then um, I ran into Jay. Like he used to record, there was this bar across the street from my old job and he used to record like in a building across the street from that. So it was like basically like a V and he was coming out to his Maybach and Hangar yeah. 18 just came out and I just got the CDs and I was at the bar and I saw him and I came running out full speed. I was like, yo, Jay. And his bodyguard was just like, no. Mm. <laughs> and the dude was like giant, like, you know, NFL tackle size. And he, I was like, can you give this to Jay? <laughs> And then yeah, that those are my three. Those that's a good. Oh, I, I want to toss one in very very briefly. Shouts okay. to a friend of the show, Reef the Lost Cause, and and a good rap friend in general. When Reef and I, like Reef and I, have seen each other during COVID. More, I've seen him more than I've seen anyone else in my life. That's not a family member because wow. Reef lives like two blocks from me. So I've okay. seen Reef walking up and down my block for the last two years, almost every fucking day. We always like dap up each other and shit. And he's been that's on the amazing. show. Right. But yeah. in when I started doing shows in Philly, like Reef was big here because he was winning battles. He went to Scribble Jam. He had an album out and all that. But he used to work in Center City in Philly. And so did I. So I would see it. I think it was the last time he had like a real job. So I would see him like once every three, four months. And I would know who he was. But he just looks so fucking pissed off and angry, like coming out like some law firm or wherever the fuck he worked. We're always wanting to say something, but he's scared the shit out of me because he had like a don't fuck with me face. Yeah. But I'd always see him on the street. I'd always be like, hey, you're I'd be like, oh, I just like put my head down. Yeah. And he had a look like it looked like he was looking at you, but he just was mad at the world because he hated his job or some shit. So later on, we when we got cool with each other, he was kind of like that still where he would always like look he had like a sidekick he would always be on his fucking sidekick he would never like engage with you he'd always be on a fucking sidekick texting bitches whatever and then finally after like our 50th encounter we became like homies but he was very scary I hate like walking <laughs> out of a job that he fucking hated and then would you know go on tour with 
AOTP and Vinny Paz and all that. So shout out to that. Went full circle. There you go. That's shout out to Reef. <laughs> all right. So so Rhino, who has IG in LA Fire. Sure. Again, La Fire. Again, La Fire. Yeah, there you go. Um, he wants to know if rap was a stock market and you wanted to double your value of your portfolio in the next three years, which rapper and producer would you invest in? Arm and Hammer. Mm. Mm. Um, that's a safe bet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like they've already doubled. Yeah, they're not going down. Yeah. As far as I can tell, the, true. the trajectory has not changed since that's they doubled. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to say Steel Tip Dove is my producer. Oh, shit. All right. Um, phew. Because right, if when he when he said doubled in value in three years, like it's that's incredible to double your money. Yeah. Like if, if you get like six to seven to ten percent gains in a year, that's pretty amazing. So to double, like that's why I'm, I'm it's hard for me to figure that out. But I think Dove, I think Dove is on that path as a producer. And I would have said that if he wasn't here tonight. So there you go. Um rapper, double your money. Baby Keem. Uh, who is it? Baby Keem. I don't know them. You you know all this new flash shit. I don't know. Baby Keem, is. he had the track with Kendrick. I don't know it. Last you know, a few months ago, Family Ties, the single with Kendrick. Don't know it. I know you're oh, about, yeah. oh yes. I know. Yep. I know it's so, yes. And everyone was like, Oh, that's right. Kendrick Lamar is like literally one of the best rappers live. We we thought we forgot. <laughs> like he came back and destroyed <laughs> everybody with one verse. Fuck. Listen to that album. Listen to that baby keem album. That's his cousin. He's 20. He produced Damn. most of it himself and he does the sing song Drake shit too. And, oh uh, wow! I would I would invest. Okay, nice. Who do you got, Lask? I I can't. I, I'll I'll go back to it. I'll think of somebody. Um, Tyga. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Tyga. I was like, what? <laughs> that shit is fucking ten cent um, stock, bro. He's he's cratered. Uh, Mike. Yeah. Okay. I so. Yeah, I like Mike. I think that he he has the potential. Uh, Navy Blue is another dude. Um. Mm. Oh, I guess. And then as a producer, I'll go. Um, I'll go with a with another you know sort of friend of the show, Messiah Music. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. My rapper is Teller Banks. Yeah. Mm, nice one. Yes, he's on okay, double. I gotta up. check because I keep seeing the name. Oh, Teller is stupid nice. Yeah, yes. So. You gotta go with Teller Banks. He's he's on me and Andrew's new record. He's on more records from the extended fam. Yes. Fuck with Teller Producer Banks. Is hard. Producer's hard for me. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I picked you, bro. Thank you, man. Uh, let me look at my Spotify. You got the game in your hand. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Yo, I'm excited for Quality Chris's new album. Oh, every, yeah. body, I was peeping it, bro. Every, I was peeping it. It's every crazy. single non music friend I have. You know, I try to put them onto a lot of music and it's super hit or miss. It's with 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 a lot of music friends, it's a little less hit or miss. Maybe something will grow on them and they'll give it more chances because they're interested in music. My regular friends who aren't like in music. Right. Anytime I play Quelly Chris's shit or like recommend the Quelly Chris to, to friends, they're like, who? Then they find it, they pull up their phone right away and they save it. Yo, he's the best. His new shit is, is yeah, he's amazing. amazing. Dope. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fire. I only heard the first three, four songs on it in advance, and it's, it's like a lot of singing. It's very melodic. I like it. So good. Yeah. What do you got next, Lask? Okay, so next we got this is one for Dove only. We got some dove. We got some dove centric questions coming up. This right, is I'm, from. I'm, I'm gonna take a piss. Go for it. I'll be right back. C4X. Um, he wants to know: Does Darko the Super get your weirdest beats, and if so, why? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, no, the honest answer to the question is not. Nah, nobody gets my weirdest beats. <clears throat> um. And that's not to mean I don't send my weirdest beats to people. It's just to mean I can't, I make too many beats and I think I know too many rappers to, um, unless I'm specifically asked to, I don't put too much effort into trying to send the right beat to the right rapper. Mm. I just send beats that I'm like, this is a beat that I would love to hear a rapper I like, which is who I'm going to be sending beats to uh, yeah. rap on. And maybe they will, maybe they won't. So I send packs based on that. So, okay. um, no, 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 no rapper gets like my weirdest beats. 
on purpose. Uh, Darko probably is the is the root cause for why you think that question needed to be asked. Darko picks <laughs> the weird beats. Darko does. I love Darko, words. man. Shout out to Darko. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, I think so I, then, I, think I, I actually answered that question in a full sense, which is rare. You did, so yeah. You, you did. <laughs> uh, so next one we have from uh, employee. Shout out to employee. Um, he goes by Emp. Comp and copium, um, and he has two questions. One is your what is your name origin? Okay. Um, so that's the first tipped dove. <clears throat> I wonder if Zilla knows these people because um, it comes from a rapper. I stole it from a rap song, and it's a okay. lyric. And uh, in the song, I think the context is that he's the rapper is talking about a woman. He's looking for his steel tipped dove. And uh, I had a production name at the time, J Fuse. Okay. <laughs> Which is part of me doesn't hate it, but it's bad. Um, uh, I mean, it really is like sort of the way you ended it. Yeah, because my name is <laughs> yeah, J Fuse. So, that, yeah. But um, I took that turn of phrase. I just liked it. I really liked the song. I took the turn of phrase and just ran with it. And it became, it became the name. And now I can't escape it, even though I wish I could. Her, uh, uh, often uh, yeah, that's how i feel I, about I, alaska too yeah i often wish i could get rid of the name but the name origin is from a song called lights out paris by a rapper named sims okay no oh yeah I know sims. part of the doom tree crew yeah i eventually got to meet him in person and be like i, I took the, my name from you and he's like oh yeah okay cool like i kind of knew that i was like thank you that's all i need <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i wanted to work with him that um that crew, you know, they 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 did not fare well. Um, no, they did not. Their founder became, you know, became known. They yeah. had a bit of an asshole. Um, but uh, and what was the question? Where is the name origin from? Okay, there you go. That was yeah. The so origin. then, then his other question is: any future projects with Antoine? No. Or Antoine? I saw that question. No, Antoine is a sexual predator. He's a sexual. He's been convicted of sexual assault. Ooh. Who is Antoine? You guys know Antoine? No. no. He was in Secret Circle with Lil Ugly Mane and Wiki. Oh, okay. Oh, whoops. He was a rapper. He was getting very, very popular. He was part of the whole Das Racist era. Um, he was on Epitaph Records. He Shit. formed. A, he formed. I didn't a, know the name. I just never heard him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now, nah, dude's a rapist and a scumbag. So word. Okay. Damn. Okay. Okay. So um, that's a weird question. I looked at that guy's Twitter profile and it was like kind of trolly. It was. Oh yeah, I mean the emp. Emp goes back to like Phil of Flavor and uh, Hip Hop Infinity. I don't know. And he that. he was like, I know him personally. Okay. Like someone, right. he's, he's a good dude, but, um, you know, he sort of just like fucks with everyone. Yeah, he was like go. Machine yeah. Gun Kelly is better than uh, Kendrick Lamar or something like that. And the first thing I saw on his, on his, I was like, why is he asking me about Antoine? This feels weird. Oh, my yeah. God. Because that was like a big article in Pitchfork and everything. Okay. Those dudes were really popular. Wiki and... Uh, yeah, I love Wiki, man. Shout out to Wiki. They shut that group down when they found out that. that Damn. Yep. Yeah. That's uh. So no. Uh, good, so man. the answer to the question, no. Nah. Nah. Moving um, hard, no. Damn, I just had a question. I think I I un unchecked it. It was, fuck, I forgot it. Sorry. Un unchecked. Uh, so if we forgot your question, um, I had it in like the bookmarks, and now it's just lost in the history, and I'm not gonna uh, for it. Um, so another dove question. What rapper who you haven't worked with would you want to produce a full album for? Mm. Any any rapper that I want to work with, I definitely want to do a full album. So like um, Ben Staples, Earl Sweatshirt, Danny Brown. You know, I feel like given the opportunity, there'd be something in the pack where they'd be like, this is weird. You made this shit. And then we could make some <laughs> some, some songs. Uh, um, but those are the three that come to mind right away. Oh, OK. Uh, I don't know. There's there's too many to think of or name. Please, that, Earl but... Sweatshirt, work with Dove because then I may fucking enjoy one of your albums for the first time since. Oh uh, no, Sick was good. Sick was good. Sick was really good. Like uh... I said, Earl Sweatshirt, work with Steel Tip <laughs> Dove so I can enjoy one of your fucking albums front to back for the first time since Doris. Thank you. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's that's I don't know. Right. I feel like so, I uh, three is a lot. You know, I could have said just one, but three is a lot. I feel really uh, bad for I'm sure there's maybe people listening that wish 
I would have said other people, but I, I'm on the spot and a little stone, so I'm just going to move on. Nice. There you go. All right. Um, so Hoodie Guthrie, a.k.a. Paul Goodbrand, wants to know, you can only save one from the fire. What would it be? Beats or rhymes? <sighs> what? does That's so meta. Oh, right. Uh, uh, no, beats. I got I, I to gotta save beats. Yeah, I, I because beats. like I couldn't go all day just listening to, unfortunately, the best fucking acapellas in the world aren't going to yeah, sustain right. me uh, in yeah. terms of living my life. So beats as well. Yeah. yeah I mean, shout well, out to the producers. About, like, they're, they're often... <laughs> this is a win yeah, for the producers. How, <laughs> how many rappers that are great rappers that just can't pick beats are you checking? No, I mean you, we talked about the Wu Tang, we talked about Nas, we talked Canada. about uh, we yeah. talked about a lot of them already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So put me with in touch with Ghostface. There you That's go. That's another one that I would love to. God, imagine nah, dudes bro. like that just started reaching into the underground. That'd they're they're, they're major they label, bro. They're, they're too major. I I'm not talking about the yeah. practicality of it for them. Oh, I'm I see talking about saying. the artistry of it. It would be. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it'd be incredible! It'd be really artistically fulfilling for everyone, but yeah, they just think it's a step down. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know. Well, I know. All right, it sucks. All right, so um, let's let's drop one more, and we'll take a quick break and come back, and we're almost done, actually. Boom! Maybe. So, all right, uh, Elohim grins, aka Duggo eighty one, wants to know: Lineage of greatness, Red Man, why or why not? Uh, I think I think his name has been shot down in the co op culture text thread. Yeah. Um, for reasons I don't quite grasp, I think um, his first three albums are fucking phenomenal. I think everything after that is either okay to well, where does unlistenable. Blackout fit? Where does Blackout fit into that? Oh, uh, man. That's a great question. Him and Meth. Blackout's fucking in. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. His first three albums, phenomenal. Doc's the name, kind of cool, very weird. Fun. And Blackout rules. And then everything after that is a shit show, like horrible. As a person who bought Red Gone Wild on CD release day at Best Buy and don't remember anything about it. And malpractice is trash. Like he's got the longer he goes, the harder it is to justify the greatness of the first six years producers man producers. But he's a producer. That's the crazy Uh, part. Okay. Uh, My which is wild. Imagine he reached out. (laughs) Get, get yeah. him with Prince Paul. Get him with Prince Paul. Oh, good call. Could you imagine? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. But he's yeah. he's also like just bad at rapping now. Like really bad. And I love this dude. He gets these normal beats, the same beats all the time. It's like nothing's challenging. Yes. You know, but like he's like, no, uh, he's like no new pockets or anything. For no. Metal. Get him out with like Mad Lib or something. Yeah, yes. something weird, man. Something weird yeah. like that. That would be crazy. Or like right? knowledge. Yeah, full weird. Knowledge or no. Mad Lib. One of those there's dudes. So many, there's so many producers, but but this is this is what we were saying. That that you know. So he, I, I think Red Man's more a we need to talk about. He's part of that series. Yes. To me. I don't I don't think he ever hit greatness. Like not think... not like when you have like that sort of heralded ground, like for um what was the last one we did? We did um well, we, we, we just... Ghostface. We did Ghost, uh, we, we did, did Ray Prodigy, Conan, Prodigy, we did Ray. Then we did Nas early on. Uh, we did Nas, obviously. yeah. We did uh, uh D'Angelo. D'Angelo. Yeah, so no one's we haven't done Red Man's yet, not, which is wild. yeah, Red Man is not even coming close to any of this no. uh, level. So he's a no, tier. No, he's not he's not Phil Collins. And this is and I Fat love Joe. Him. Fat and I love Joe. Yeah, you do Fat Joe. Oh, see, I don't even agree with that one, but <laughs> Fat Joe was more for longevity, I think, than anything. But, but Fat, Fat Joe's Fat Joe's so boring. Fat Joe's highs aren't as high as Red Man, but his lows are like Red Man's lows are catastrophic. It's yeah. it's really sad. Where and Fat Joe Fat again. Joe is the Jason Bateman of rap. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I fuck with Jason Bateman way more than. Fat Joe, but <laughs> but he's just had like a long career, yeah, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. always fun to have around. Yeah, like lean back. I mean, yeah, dude, lean back. all like, the way up, you like every couple years, all the way up. Oh, I do, I do fuck it all the way up. Like, uh, your real yeah. shit. What's the last Your Red Man song that actually penetrated any culture anywhere? Fucking Let's Get Dirty nah, yeah, with Christina Aguilera. We agree. No, his agree verse on, on um on like your whole crew's yellow like mustard packs. Um, yeah, but that that's that? that's that that's on the W album. That's album what I'm saying. Red Bull. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah, like yeah, I don't see Red Man at getting a. Uh, really he's just like a, he's like a great character, you know, with the yeah. MTV Cribs and Bride of Chucky and all that shit he did. But greatest MTV Crib of all time. Oh, he yeah. easily. Oh my god, yeah. not even a contest. Not even a contest. Yeah, no, no. that's the best. It might be top ten MTV moment of all time. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh there's also who I think either Styles in the cab on Punk, where he just gets him, walks out. <laughs> Was it Styles? Well, from the last. Yeah, I think it was Styles or it could have been uh oh, anyway, punk. one a rapper, I'm pretty sure Styles B on Punk. You remember Punk with that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And just eventually he just gets so fed up that he's just like, I'm out. He gets out of the cab and just I think I saw they, it, yes. Then they have to end it because it's like, oh, I, he's actually going away. Like, Yo, real quick, do you know why they like they, they canceled Punk? Nah. Because it was because of the black eyed peas. They got punk they and wouldn't let him. So the black eyed peas got punk because it was like Ashton and them were like had like fake cops pull them over and like search them. And so they were like searching them and the black eyed peas just started whooping their ass. Oh my god. Yes. Wow. They started beating the shit out of them. That's so amazing. they had to cancel like, the fucking show. Expect that from the black yes. eyed peas. <laughs> like, yo, That's they used awesome. to roll with easy E, bro. Like that shit ain't no, sweet the, all the, the time. The Kanye, one, shit. the Kanye one was crazy. Do you remember that one? <laughs> nah. Yanked the fucking shit right out of the cop's hands. The cop took the uh tape, the reel they were shooting on film. Oh so shit. If you lose that film, you're fucked. You shot all day or whatever. Right. He fucking yanked the shit right out of the cop's hands and ran. Oh my <laughs> god. The jumped into a van. They almost not they almost hit oh. the guy with the van. Like they he fell and shit. And then that came out on the Netflix Jesus documentary. No, they, they, none of that was on there. I oh think. darn. Well, it was all for naught. Um, it was on the punk shit. <laughs> Punk Kanye. Matthew Perry one was crazy too. <laughs> Matthew Perry. <laughs> Holy shit. You're bringing it back, dude. Matthew Perry. All right. What was the question? Wow. I don't even know. Red Man. It was anyway, the we wrapped it up. It was we the Red Man up. question. Lineage yeah. of greatness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's let's do our last break then and we'll wrap up. Wrap yeah, up yeah. Part. Let's do the last break and then we'll 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 home stretch this bitch. Mailbag at Colham Culture. We'll be back yeah. with Steel Tip Dove. Boom. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? You go to drink a hot drink, but it's too hot and it burns your mouth. Ah, oh, it! So you cool it down with an ice cube, but the ice cube is haunted. Now you hear the voice of the governess echoing through your head, even though she's been dead for hundreds of years. Now you're at work. Your boss is talking to you, but all you can hear is, I know who killed me. I know who killed me. You've got to help the governess. But you won't be able to. Not while your boss is talking. Not while he's alive. Now you're on the run. It'll be nightfall soon, and you only have an hour left of kerosene in your flashlight. Why did you buy a flashlight that runs on kerosene? You hear the sirens in the distance. It won't be long now. Luckily, there's a solution. Call me when you're outside. The new album by Steel Tip Dove is available now on Backwood Studios Records. Limited run of vinyl and CD is available on BackwoodStudios.com. Digital album available on all digital streaming sites. Daisy Age, a.k.a. Camo Bucket Hats, wants to know, mm. what are the absolute, undeniably worst tracks by true school artists that are universally revered? So I think we need to clarify something before we answer this question. Okay. Does he mean the tracks are universally revered or the mm. artists are universally revered? Read it again. I think he meant the tracks. Okay. See, I thought he meant the artists. So I what are the, the absolute, artists? What are the absolute worst tracks by true school artists that are absolutely revered? There's no commas in there to okay. separate it. Okay. Um, so our choice to make is whether we think it's the worst, whether the song is revered or the artist is revered. Either way, yeah. I mean, it, it works kind of the same okay. way because if a song is revered at that level, it's likely the artist is probably revered. At least at one point they were. So yeah, but it has to be the worst of the revered. Tracks. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a popular artist worst song. Like yeah. Um, that's really hard for me. Uh, let's see. I know my 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 bet my my choice is a uh, wet dreams by J Cole, <laughs> where the whole song's about how, like getting boners and shit in school. Oh. It's like is so. It really? The whole song is, and he's rhyming on the fucking impeach the president drums in like 2014 on a oh, major man. label. It is, 
And it's off the album um, 2014 Forest Hills Drive, which was like the first J. Cole album I, I pretty much enjoyed at that time. And I heard that song. I'm like, this is cheesy as fuck. And then like three months later, I heard my coworker in her office playing it. That's I'm like, oh, crazy. here it is. I would love to be able to enjoy J. Cole. Uh, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, the whole song's about like him like busting nuts in school. It's fucking terrible. It's so cool. Bad. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you what do you got, Dove? You got anything? Uh what was that like rock album Kid Cuddy put out? Oh god. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, listen, I fucked with Cuddy big time. And oh, you know, okay, I have an answer. Okay. I love it's not it's uh off kilter from the actual answer. It's not a real answer. Kid Cuddy has one of my favorite of his albums. It's called Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. <laughs> sure. Wow. Such a bad album name. Wow. Like, I can't believe how bad of an album name that is. Passion- how much oh. I love the album. It's got uh... two Andre's features on there. <laughs> Uh, that album is incredible. That's that album name sounds like it was written by a middle schooler. Passion, pain, and Demon yo, what, yo, when he shows up on the new Push album, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's not He's good like, because hmm. anything Kanye Kanye touches sounds like anything he touch Kanye touches nowadays sounds like fucking shit. He's fucking horrific trash. Oh, um, boy. I'm gonna go with. Anything from the Beastie Boys, so I'm gonna go sabotage. Oh, Jesus that's, that's not new I, school. That's from '94. What the fuck are you talking? It's true so school. Funny every They're time true I remember school. Yeah, yeah, true you know, school. Right. It came out in '86. But you just hate. Yeah, it. What, what, are you talking what, about? what do you think true school is? What, what the 30 years ago is true school? Yeah, that's what true school is. Nah, bro. Like, see, nah. I just thought true like school old... meant like a legitimately popular artist. Like, like we're naming people from like '09. 2014 that's you're like you didn't understand the question oh, yeah but we'll you just it. deeply hate the beastie boys yeah like that's <laughs> whack <laughs> Wait, I'm not... they came out in 86 you're like true school they're old school that's old that is a definition of old school no, they they're about... so then we need to define what true school is i right, have heavy heavy what's true school no i'm, I'm just wondering what are, what are we considering true school not 1986 not a group from 86 that can't be true school bro i disregarded the true school phrase from my Yo, answer they and, opened and for, i was thinking it's... about it they opened for Madonna on the Like a Virgin tour. Okay, how is that so, true school? <laughs> so it's more that sounds of pretty a true state school. of mind, actually. I've just got the definition. Uh, it's, it's like it's like Rachel Dolezal. It's a state of mind. Right, go on. It's <laughs> loosely defined in the terms of hip hop in its purest intentions. Hip hop that has nothing to be ashamed about. That is not. Uh, that is. Not. I think that when you're using this true is from school, all hip hop. This was defined by all hip hop. When oh, you're using true school hip hop, I think you're just saying like it's legitimate. It doesn't matter what era. Uh, all right. Okay, so yeah. I, I'll take back my. I would because I would define them as old school, but go ahead because they're okay. I mean, school. they've been around forever. You yeah, know, most forty years. <laughs> they're horrible. Um. So it's so funny because I have opinions like that as well, where it's like delivered so objectively <laughs> and it's so objectively an opinion. So you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's so obvious, like they're good to so many people. You're just like, no, they're it's a fact that they're bad at music. It's like, well, <laughs> um, shit, man. Um, so now it's going to be something good. Um. What about Nas? So much of Nas's shit is so yeah, like it's so bad. Is he true school too? He's thirty yeah, years old. Of course. Old what do you game. mean? How could Nas not be true? Yeah, he's school? true school. True school is a state that, of mind. That, that bro. term is throwing me off. That term's man. really throwing you off, bro. I don't get it. it. Is. What is? Yeah, like I'm Dude, not. You think J Cole? Nobody talks about J Cole. Yeah, J Cole's not true he's school. He's one of the biggest fuck? fucking artists in the world. What are you talking about? Nobody, nobody talks nobody about J Cole. Nope, not about in the J. Cole. true I'm gonna look school him up context, on Spotify. That's for Spotify. Sure. I'm gonna show you people talking about this motherfucker. Unfortunately, I'm not debating that whether he's popular or not. Nobody's calling. Only him people that school. talk about about uh, J Cole are people that like stop listening to rap in like '92. He's like the Foo Fighters for rap. <laughs> nah, you're like <laughs> the Pearl Jam. Like, the way like the way like old dudes are like rock. Died with Pearl Jam. Nah, young young people love J Cole. And yo, like, this, yo, twenty nine million listens a month on Spotify. Yeah, Jesus like three Christ, <laughs> twenty nine million. Three dudes in bots. Um, <laughs> shit. I guess I will pick. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, Miss Jackson. How's that? Is that cool? 
Wow. Yes. That song. I love that song. Yeah. Wow. I love uh, that song. I, I just never need to hear it, it again. Like, yeah, okay. I yeah, fucking yeah. need to hear it again. Fair enough. Yeah. It's like one of those Fair songs, like, why do we have to play that Outcast song? Why it's like it a Weezer. Like it's like the way it's played on the radio. It's like the way we that dude from Weezer described how he had a formula to write a pop hit. Oh, yeah. Rivers. Like, that's what Sorry, Miss Jackson sounds like a pop yeah. hit. Like, it, Fair enough. Perfect. All right. Perfect. I guess it's true. It's true school. <laughs> All right. so You're weird. up on the true school. I just true school. Sure. So so like, let, let's shift gears. That's here. gonna be my my new band camp tag. Can't true be school Cole, artist. J Cole can't be outcast. It can't be Beastie Boys. It can't be. That's what is true school? To I you, don't man? fucking know. Shouts to Bucket True Master. Head. Anything produced by True, true Master. Master. <laughs> I love True Master. Shouts uh-huh. to. It's an album by True from No Limit and True Master. <laughs> the True Real Master. Untouchables, T R U. They're the best. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Subbo, I think that's how we pronounce his name. Have we settled on Sub- that? Subbo, Subdo. Chester. Yeah, S U B O E. So, he wants to know what are who are some of our favorite lyricists outside of hip hop? Man. Favorite lyricists outside of hip hop? Yeah. Yes. Tom Waits. Tom Waits. Yo, I was hmm. gonna say Tom Waits. That's funny, man. Uh, yeah, Tom's great. Um, Leonard Cohen is great. Uh, you know who lyrically I really love too? Iron and Wine. Hmm. He's really fucking dope. Um, man, really man. Like, who is it? Man, man. You guys know man. Oh, man, man. man. Yeah, that, is that, isn't that, uh, yeah, they were like, I haven't listened to him in forever. Such a good band. They might be a film. I like a, like Frank Turner's first two records. They're like really, really well written. I'm not super. Oh, um, Frank Ocean. Sure. Yeah. He's a fucking yeah. amazing writer. There's like just so many. Yeah, I don't. That's such a. Once yeah. you start thinking about it, you're like, oh, everybody. Like, I don't know all my yeah. favorite songwriters that don't make it up. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> Somebody I just got into the last uh, few months, PJ Harvey. Man, she's a fucking great whoa, yeah. throwback. Ooh, is she active? Great, yeah. Is she releasing current? Oh, she music? puts out shit like every two years. I really? I started from I the beginning with that. her. Oh my god! Yeah, wow. right, so so I have one that you guys think I'm probably thinking I'm gonna be joking about. Taylor Swift. She has amazing fucking lyrics. Sure, I know phrasing. a lot of people whose 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 opinion I really held in high regard. Who were like, you have to give it up to her. She's like a writer. Yo, you know, you know who's yeah, an amazing I, writer? It was Amy Winehouse. Oh course. yeah. Woo! Like the writing was like sad but good. Uh, Fiona Apple. Outside sure. of hip hop, outside of rap, Drake I yeah. think is a phenomenal writer. I love Drake. <laughs> And I'm serious, um, like he writes pop songs that I think yeah, are like, I love that shit. It's perfectly Drake. dialed in to make him more famous. Like I'm not talking about him as a rapper or a hip hop artist, but like I, as I love his rhyming, writer, bro. It's brilliant the way they produce things like in that context. Yeah. Ozzy era Black Sabbath is really <laughs> I'm dead serious, man. I'm I hear you, man. I'm like... not I'm, I don't think you're fucking with me. <laughs> you ever um, fuck with a uh, Harry Nelson? Brilliant. He's so you know, funny. So cool. funny. Yeah, it's just very so like tongue in cheek. It's like, um, very playful. His writing. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Harry Nielsen is incredible. Uh, Tom Waits is the king, though. He has, you said it first. I was gonna say yeah. it too. Like, who's funnier and like more like? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> that's why me and Prime are friends, bro. Is it? Bro, that's kind of part of why me and me and Prime are friends as well. That first album, I produced two tracks on that album. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that was, Mark's that Wild Years. Credit. Yep, I have my first credit with Woods ever on that joint. Mm. What which Tom Waits song did you uh, uh I did I Christmas remember. card from a hooker for one? Oh, you did that shit. And you then something where he says she took all my money. I don't know if that's the name of the song though. I think I sampled from Swordfish from Bones. Ooh. And um Are you a Waits fan, Tim? Are you I mean I I enjoy him, but I'm not like deep diving in him. Okay. Oh man. Yeah. I'm I'm rereading his book now, uh Innocent When You Dream which is a collection of interviews from like the late seventies through like the early two thousands. Yo, you need to watch his um, fishing with John episode. What is that? Yo, do you know, do either of you know about fishing with John? No, no. There's a songwriter named John Lurie. You guys know John Lurie? Mm, I've heard the name. Okay. He had an HBO show a long time ago called fishing with John. Uh, He would just take like Dennis Hopper out fishing and they would talk borderline interview but it was like weird right probably only lasted a season or two because it was really meta and weird it was on tv it was on hbo bro. oh <laughs> tom shit. waits was a guest um the guy i just said pretty famous ass people go fishing on. with this guy 
kind right. of fishing with John. It was a little boring and weird. Not now the modern version is Chillin' Island. Those those guys, yeah. know, Despot and the cutest. Right. That's, yeah. they're, it's, uh, Uzi. I mean, but if you if you're a Tom Waits fan, watch Fishing with John with Tom Waits. It's That's awesome. Yeah. I pull it up. Cool. What's the next question, bro? Cool. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me get back to the the page. Fishing with John. <laughs> so see, crazy right, so, why that didn't catch on fishing with john <laughs> so big r and sd has a, oh, has a handful of quick shots for us my guy so first one's for dove any new stuff with shirt on the way um you know what's funny is uh he he tweeted or he put out an instagram post a couple weeks ago or something he's like nine new songs grammy winning producer and i'm like yo who is this <laughs> who's he working with i want to know i'm a big shirt fan I mm. sent him beats after he put that out. And he's like, let me get this one. But I doubt we have anything coming out. Mm. I don't know. I would love to. But yeah, shirt is the man. All right. So uh, and NBA finals. Who's everybody got? Uh, Celtics and Warriors. That's not even your team. The Sixers aren't making the finals. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah. uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The Celtics Jets. and the Warriors. Yeah. The Jets. The Jets. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, we've done the thoughts on Pusher T's already. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so he wants to know his wife is out of town for the weekend. What inappropriate movie should he show the three-year-old? SLC punk. <laughs> oh, good one. Yeah. Um, little monsters with fucking Fred Savage. And Howie oh, Mandel. Shit, wait, why is that inappropriate? Was it? <laughs> that movie's first... wild and appropriate. For anyone like, like under 14, that shit yeah, is kind of scary, up. right? It's yeah. fucked up. And there's one part where he like pisses in a kid's drink and a kid drinks piss in school. Oh, that kind it's of fucked up, man. The movie's right fucked now. up. Yeah, it's fucked up. I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess uh fear and loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> That'll just look like a carnival to a three-year-old. It might not even yeah. be that scary. Yeah, no, gummo. Like, right. Gummo right, with a gummo. harmony caress. That's too yeah. banal. That also will just get boring. Spring breakers. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Gucci main. Terrifier. Terrifier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh then we have an, another quick round of questions. Tweets Van Zant wants to know, aka Crunch Rap Crunch up, brother. Rap Supreme Clientele wants to know. Dove in Alaska, are you gonna do an album? Hey, listen, no, you don't answer that question. question. My no. answer. Yeah, I mean look, at, we, at we've been time. talking about it for a while and it's on me. So, but we will. Um, favorite Air Max. 97 never owned a pair yeah i never owned a pair either but the originals i don't know um 97 what's everybody's walk-on song like if you're a guest on a talk show or you know if you're going to to the plate to bat what's the song that you go with um you know it's funny when when i was really into baseball and playing baseball and all these different leagues i, I was at a minor league baseball game once being my buddy and we, we, we said this to each other. We were like 16 years old. We we're like, yo, what would your at-bat song be? And he picked some song. And this when this song was cracking, so I said it, and I never forgot it. It was like, Karis won Step Into the World Puffy Remix. Wow. Because <laughs> it had like an ill, it had like the, the puffy. How'd they clear that sample? Dun, 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 dun. And it had like the um the biz marquee scratches in it. And it had like Puffy and, and, and KRS. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be my at bat music when I make the majors. And I'll never forget that. So there you go. I remember uh, there was somebody on the Phillies that had Work by Gangstar. And I'm like, that is the best fucking at bat. And hearing that in a stadium, I think it was Jimmy Rollins. It was amazing. It was him or someone. I think it was Jimmy Rollins. It was great hearing that on speakers so but yeah i'll go i'll go karis one step into a world puff daddy remix <laughs> <laughs> what do you got though oh uh Ock and yelly put it in your mouth okay nice one i'm going with uh in the summertime by mungo jerry <laughs> <laughs> rapo jerry in the summertime creepo rapo jerry. all right creep by <laughs> radiohead is my backup Oh my there god! You go. And and he, his last question is your your uh, go to pizza topping. It depends what kind of pizza we're saying. If if it's a red pizza, meaning with sauce, I'm I'm a classic guy, pepperoni. Mm. If it's a white pizza, which is you know just cheese, I'm a big broccoli and chicken guy on the white mm. pizza. And then you got to uh, put the garlic in the oregano and parm and a little bit of uh, pepper. Gonna go. 
Yeah, I think pepperoni and onions. Okay. <clears throat> and pineapple's um, fine. The way people react to pineapple is if it's not just like a weird thing, like as if other things aren't weird to put on other foods. Right. Yeah. Pineapple's good on pizza. I don't know. Pineapple's good on anything. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's pineapple. I've never it's weird pineapple that pineapple pizza. can be hot and be good, but it can and always is, yeah, no matter how hot it, it gets. Pineapple? It's like real pineapple. Yeah. Is the best way to just literally off the grill. Yeah. Oh, it gets a little caramelized on it too. Come on. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, salami and onions. Yeah. Salami. salami really- and, what what year were you bored? Forty six. Dude, there's, there's a pizza and place upstate. There's a pizza place they fry upstate it. That's that why. makes uh, it with, like salami on it. It's fucking amazing. It's like pepperoni, but like a little different. Yeah. It's like a little different. It's nice. They fry or it. Or bacon. Okay. Bacon is good on pizza too. I mean, yeah, That's bacon's bacon, solid. Bacon's good on it. Yeah. It's kind of undefeated. All right, so I don't even know if this is a question more that just something when I read it blew my mind. I never, I never saw this. <laughs> so, Liber Radish uh, wants to know: Has anyone ever pointed out that Good Kid, Mad City, and Prince Among Thieves are basically the same album? A concept album. Uh, they hit all the same beats. Aspiring rapper seeks record deal with legendary producer, freestyles, demo in car, gets detoured in the streets, etc. The only difference is Good Kid, Mad City uh, has a happy ending while Prince Among Thieves ends in tragedy. Yeah, Breeze gets killed. Um, yeah. It's very different only because they don't... Like, I've listened to Good Kid. I have, I have the record right over here. It, it doesn't have as many characters and set pieces and tropes and stand-ins where people are playing the characters. Does that make sense? So like MC8 kind of plays a part on the album where he's kind of like the OG on the block who's like running the streets, but that's really it. Like there's no one else to put it to put it a little less. It's there's less skits. There's there's yeah. more skits but less detailed skits. Yes, like so there's like voicemail skits where he's talking to his mom and he's talking to yeah schoolboy Q about doing shit. It's a it's quite a parallel. It is. I, mean, I, yeah, I, it I is. give him a it's fucking crazy. A for effort. I would. I'm gonna. I, I would ask Paul Barman that question because I think he's into both albums and he like has like a weird hyper knowledge of the Prince Paul shit. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, I just think Good Kid. I never realized. I never realized the similarities. So, shouts to him. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah, it's crazy. It's pretty solid, right? Yeah. Um, wasn't Michael Rappaport in one of them? Probably. No. I think so. Yeah, did I he talk he about that Prince in the Thieves. Was Eagle one of the podcast? In Prince Among Thieves? No, that was Everlast. Oh, that's right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's guy. fucked up. You confused <laughs> Everlast for rap. I thought it was. Well, I that sounded right to me. Yeah, yeah. it felt right when I said it's it. Totally wrong. It's completely wrong. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to admit that it's wrong, but it felt right. <laughs> totally. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's like one of those Berenstein, Berenstein bears things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everlast Michael Rappaport. Same person. Um, all right. So this is the last question. And we kind of already answered, like, answered it a little bit. Actually, no, it's actually completely flipped around. Never mind. What is the weirdest fan interaction that we've had with a fan? fan. And then there's a follow up question. Fan. Alaska, you're the most famous person on the pod. What was your most awkward fan interaction? Um, I signed a dude's artificial leg once. <laughs> like he got he got back from like Iraq and he was like, "Yo, can you sign my leg?" He took it off. What? He took it off and he was like, he was like, um, the song, uh, uh, with Boombox Apocalypse. He's like, that song got me through it all. And wow. Like, he signed his leg. I was like, wow. Dog, he's uh, if he's listening, yo, hit us on Twitter or DM us or leave an iTunes review, bro. If he's listening. That's and crazy. Then, um, yeah, that was my weirdest one. Fan interaction. All right. So I've what, never. Your... I I don't know. I never really had shit like that. I've been in situations where, um, because I know somebody more famous than me at a show, mm. other people will come up to me, and talk to me and be like, "Could you introduce me?" I'm like, "They're standing right here. Just go walk one more foot here. I'll lean back and you try to introduce them. <laughs> they're they're clearly like here, like." Um, but yeah, not, I, I don't, I, I haven't had a fandom and I don't, I don't go out, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't have, by the way, this is, this is a question from art fucks, AKA, uh, Ono Mar 52. 
Shouts to him. That's my guy right here. Um, You really do actually know a lot of these people, maybe not personally, but you spoke to them online, right? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and I I met him personally. So that's my guy right there. Um, Word, word. uh, Awkward fans. Um, No, I can't think of like something like along those lines. I've, I've had like awkward interactions, like for like features and shows, shit like that, but not as like, you know, me being like up on a level above somebody. Oh, okay, real quick. I do. I do. I just realized something. So a, a dude that I used to record, he was younger, and then he reached back out to me like last summer. We reconnected. I hadn't talked to him in like 10, 12 years. And he was trying to get me to reconnect with a dude from my old rap group who I haven't spoken to in like 12 years. And I was like, why are you, you know, we're like talking shit about basketball. He's like, He's like, fam, like I looked up to you guys. Like you were like my heroes. Like I'm trying to reunite you guys. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah. And he was like quoting things I said to him when I recorded him. He's like, you taught me how to record and do things this way. And then your one album and all that. And I was like, oh, (laughs) why didn't you say this at the time? (laughs) Yeah, I was like me, like me me and him kicking. Shouts to Johnny, J-O-T-S. He's a a really dope battle rapper, actually. But he, uh. He's like, I forget how much younger years he is. It made me realize like, oh, like I I made a difference to like a couple of random people in the Philly rap scene yeah, in 2008 or some shit. But me and him like kicking now. He's a Celtics fan, even though he lives in fucking Pennsylvania, which you know sickens me. But uh, shouts to him. Shouts to Johnny. All right. And then the second part of that question is, is there anyone that you've ever fanned out on? Oh, I'm sure. Are you kidding me? I'm sure. <sighs> like when, we, when you meet them, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, like somebody that you met that you like fanned out on. Uh, in music, I'm not even sure. Uh, I remember, like, I've met comedians back in like the early UCB days. I'd be like, "Yo, you're this fucking comedian." <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, nah, I don't. Nah, nah, I'm too cool for that, man. You guys know me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just too cool for that shit. We got this. You're the coolest, man. <laughs> and I've never <laughs> met uh, Frank Ocean, so I've never had a fanboy moment. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> what do you got, Alaska? Um, I mean, I've told the story before about like when, um, I, I mean, I've I've like met like like Stevie Wonder and shit in like oh, uh, shit. a guitar center, <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? I was like, oh, that's Stevie Wonder, cool, and then, like I left um because i don't know i'm not like bugged out by like big celebrities right like i'm just like yeah whatever um but crazy though it's weird like little like niche people that i meet i'm like oh shit like i was like that when i first met Pumpkinhead. i was like and it was based off of like his promo on stretch and bobito i'm like (laughs) oh shit you're Pumpkinhead. um and then so i was at um a birthday party for my daughter's friend i feel like i've told this on the podcast yes. a million times yep. you're like zillas like yeah i don't want to hear this yeah, shit again yeah just tell it quick for me on other I, I, so I, I thought on other shows too you've told this yeah story, so go for it so i mean, basically it's like there's this movie called over the edge that i loved that was like um it was like an hbo mainstay back in like the 80s when i was a kid uh-huh. and um i watched it anytime it was on and it was about like these kids that like were from the city like their parents fled to like this place called New Granada. It was supposed to be like this suburbs where everything's safe, Yo, but there's nothing for the kids to I, do. So they fucking reveled. Sounds like, so familiar. And um, so I was at a birthday party. It was like, I'm awkward around like, you know, other parents, at least I was back then. Now I don't give a fuck. So I'm not that awkward. Um, but they had a poster of it in their house. And I was talking with the husband. I was like, oh, I love that movie. That movie was great. He was like, I was in it. <laughs> and the second he said that, I was like, Oh, you're Claude. <laughs> like I knew who he was immediately. And then like the weirder shit, like as we got to know, like we became very good friends with him. Yeah. Like I dressed up like his character when we went out on Halloween together. Oh my God. <laughs> but everybody thought I was a minion because I just said <laughs> like well, it is funny like, that he, guy he had overalls his with a yellow yeah. shirt. Oh, there it is. And yeah. all the all the kids were like, You're a minion. I was like, no. God Claude damn, from Claude, over the edge. Claude, yeah. obviously. Fucking um, yes. Yo, I had Spank Rock in the studio, and I really Spank regret Rock. not getting him to sign the fucking poster. That's yeah, one of the one. Uh, I was a huge Spank Rock fan. Um, I know they've changed their name to Naeem, but 
Um, and that album's fucking incredible. But the first album, Yo, 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 that's one of my favorite albums. That's a cool fucking record. And years yeah. after they he came by to record a verse, record a feature for uh, somebody I was working with. And I was like, yo, you're fucking spank rock, bro. And, you know, it's that's it. awesome. Yeah. The that's last cool. the last person I was like really freaked out to see, because I've definitely gotten cooler about that in my life, because I feel like it's I don't want to be that dude. But in this case, I was uh, I was working in the record store and I, I went next door. There was a super fresh and I was going to super fresh in my break and get like a fucking soda or a piece of pizza or something. And Jay live was like walking in with his wow. wife to buy groceries. And I was like, oh, Jay live. Like what the, what the fuck are you doing here in South Philly? He's like, Oh, I moved here. And I was like, what part? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, man. <laughs> and I was like being a super fucking creep. And I'm like walking with them for a couple minutes and like, <laughs> really excited i was like 19 20 years old and i was like a super fucking creepo and he was like very polite about it and his wife and they were like they were, and he was like telling me oh yeah i got this job here and i'm doing all this and i was like oh my god like wow i can't believe you're here and i was like oh okay i have a cd i work next door can i get it for you he's like yeah of course and he's just, you know i gave it to him nothing happened but and then that happened in the same thing where like kevin smith walked into the store where i worked when he was shooting jersey girl and I like lost my fucking shit over Kevin it's Smith. Amazing. That's funny. Yeah. And I got a picture of him and like, and his wife was there too. And I was like, oh God. But after that, I kind of stopped being a fucking asshole like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I just play like, hey, what's up, man? You know, like, I don't know. When you're young, you're just a fucking dork about it. But yeah, Jay oh, yeah. Live and Kevin Smith. <laughs> oh, I ran into Chappelle at a rest stop once. Oh, nice. Really? That's cool. Coming back from a show in Boston, we were driving back and like, we were going in. He was coming out. I was like, oh, Chappelle. <laughs> it was like before he was famous, before he even had the Chappelle show. Yeah, oh, like kill him half softly. Era. Yeah, like that, like maybe like half baked era. Yeah, like Joe's. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Word. Cool. So, that so was that's the last it. question. That's that was the last question. Um, yeah, was Steel Tip Dove plugged the, plugged the record with the ad that got the people going crazy on the show. Yeah, call me when you're outside. I I love that album and. Other people seem to like it. I'm still trying to sell some vinyl. So if you haven't got oh. one, get one. Um, and we'll see. Dove, did I send next. you the photo from Amoeba? You did. And so did Zilla. Did. Okay. Somebody mm-hmm. else, uh, my friend Adi, she sent me one from somewhere in Ohio. And it was nice. like some other record uh, store, like a smaller one. Um, yeah. Hopefully. I, I know sometimes Woods and sometimes Lucid have them at shows. I know they did have had they had some in the West Coast shows. They might have some in Europe. I'm not sure. That's crazy. Nice. Yeah, man. It's a Still fan favorite. It. Yeah, thank you. I love that joint. Yeah, man. So uh, cool. I'm excited for what's next. What's in the can that I can't talk about during the on the air. Typical, typical fucking backwoods <laughs> artist <laughs> was teasing the f- people. Uh, Alaska got anything? Um, yeah, man, it's really close to the Ray West album being done. Got artwork for it and all that shit. Yes. Oh, I and, know uh, that producer from working with you, Zell. Yeah. Yeah. I was just texting him right today. It's dope. He was yeah, like, did you so see the artwork a- for me in Alaska? I'm like, I did. I did see it. Yeah, he's stoked on it. He's like, we're going to make a zine. We're going to do all this <laughs> other shit. I was like, all right, cool. It was are you guys working with a label or are you self-releasing it? Self-release. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess he has like red apples. Yeah, his okay, label. Cool, cool. His, so his label, label, yeah. Red Apples 45s. Yeah. yeah, that'd be dope. So looking out for that. Alaska and Ray West. Synergy. Synergy. Like DJ Khalid. Another <laughs> exactly, one. Yeah. And another Khaled. one. Another one. Grammy Family is an incredible song. It is. Oh my God. What a great <laughs> he song. He has some good songs. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. He put song. together some good songs. He did. He oh, and he, he yeah. has one on one of his albums called Grateful, where it's a picture of like his two year old son in a fucking hot tub with like a chain on. <laughs> and it's like Fat Joe. It's like Fat Joe and Raekwon remaking um, Jay Z and Too Short. It was all good just a week ago. It's called Billy Ocean. That shit is crazy. <laughs> Billy Ocean. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, for me, uh, oh, me and Andrew are wrapping up our joint album this week, nice. and then um, that'll be sent off for mixing and mastering. The Wrecking Crew album is finishing the mixing phase it is being mastered next week nice so that album's I called got, i got a Dale. really nice text from prem uh the other day about it oh yeah he heard your part on there for the first time yeah yeah when yeah. will that come out 
Great question. Um, <laughs> my guess now is April 20th. I my imagine I imagine probably June ish. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll probably drop me and Andrew now. I was hoping to do June, but I don't want to step on Wrecking Crew's toes clearly. So mm. maybe late summer, early fall, me and Andrew. Word. That what that album's called uh Don't Wait Till I Leave. So there you go. That's nice. the name of that album. And then Wrecking Crew is Sedale Threat. So that's in the can. Oh, with a lot I've of heard cool some shit. of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you recorded a lot of that shit. Yeah. Um, you sent me a lot of the vocals. So there you go. So that's what we got. And then uh Castro's hanging in there doing his thing, doing great. Yeah. He's really improving. I spoke to him today. He's feeling better. So it's cool. uh everybody who jumped it on the backwoods auction that bought, you know, dove shit was in there, fucking arm and hammer shit, everything else, people doing Patreon. I mean, all that goes to Castro. So uh we appreciate it, man. Thank you to everybody checking yeah, in man. and um fuck with us on Patreon and regular shit. Follow Can't Dove. Get you back in here, Castro. Yeah, we need him to get back in. Yeah, uh, Steel Tip Dove at Steel Tip Dove, all one word on Twitter. Yep, all those things. Yep. All, one, all word. one word. There it is. Um, and then we got uh, what's what what's up with your podcast, motherfucker? I'm just a little bored with myself. <laughs> like I need to do, and I tried a thing. I had my dude Lacutus come over a little while ago, and I interviewed him, and I tried a different thing where I wrote questions in advance, and I tried to like not be myself. I tried to like. Maybe act like an interviewer, act like someone who would be on camera and needed to be a little more on. And uh, I went terribly because I'm not that person that can only just be just like you. normal. Right? Awesome. I, I, no, I get it. I just wanted to try something. It didn't work. Um, so I'll bring it back because I, I thought it was great, stuff. man. Which one? My podcast at the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying it wasn't good. I just um, wanted to try to bring something more to it. And I haven't figured out what yet. I, I have gotcha. some ideas just like little things like people like having um, uh, segments is a good word to describe it. Segments and re- repetitive, like little, you know, you guys know, cause you guys successfully implement segments and, and repetitive. Yeah. Stuff like if, you that. Think, if you think we do, sure. Mostly it's Alaska and me telling the same stories four times. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I would like to bring yeah, that back. I, I, I some... almost told my Chuck D. Hand Chuck <laughs> I think Castro uh, saying, fuck Tyler Quali and Eric Sarver. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah i would like to bring that back a palace from ruin there's good episodes with all you guys on there yeah um yeah that's fine I'll check that well, out if you come, haven't come back into the game you're the, you're a podcast maniac so you should yeah man you should be in the mix we're gonna all get right. it going that's it i think that's everything thanks for everybody who submitted the questions yeah thank you yes yeah you cool. guys are the stars of the show <laughs> <laughs> you're the real star here what yeah. do you say on fucking the boys um homelander you guys are the real heroes. Every time you like boys, you guys are the real heroes. <laughs> and, and thank you, thank you, you are for creating the platform that allows us to do this. Oh God! Don't get me started on that guy. Yes. Join our Patreon. We can hear me last and spend thirty minutes talking about fuck Elon Musk and fuck Mr. Carrot. Oh man. We got you good. All right, man. So we'll wrap it up. Everybody, be safe out there. Enjoy yourselves. Travel, don't wear a mask, Sock, look at your dollars, whatever the fuck you want to do. COVID's over. <laughs> COVID's over. It's over whether you like it or not. It's over. Alright, let's go. Right. None of us are wearing masks in this podcast, bro. It's not safe. <laughs> it's not safe.